Well, it was surprising. All of a sudden the bell started working. I didn't know why. And then I was concerned about the shift key because it's kind of weird on the right side where it shifts. Mm. And um, it ended up working. I don't know why. It just <laughs> kind of foolproof unit. Just needed to be degreased and cleaned? Uh, well, I, I had taken out the, um, I don't know what you call it, but it keeps all of the key bars kind of in order. There's like a... Mm you know, comb-like looking thing. Mm -hmm. I took that out because it, it just was hard to clean. It was really messed up. Oh, yeah. Cleaning. And so uh, when I was putting that back in, it was, I don't know, I had my doubts about whether I was going to make it work again, but it, it's okay. Well, good. <laughs> and I learned that uh, <laughs> I, I pushed the tab button and thought it would just go, you know, but apparently you have to use the two keys, you know, the carriage release and the tab. Oh. Because it doesn't have a motor, you know, it doesn't release the uh, escapement. Oh. Hmm. It seems like it should. I think it's a 1907 unit. I, oh, I think okay. I assumed you'd use both. And, but I don't know. Maybe it. Maybe no, you're right. A, that old it might have been the design of them back then. Um, yeah, they cleaned up real well. And this, you know, I don't know, these things just keep working, don't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we love about them. <laughs> mm -hmm. For the most part. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Well, this well, um, was out of a collection that a, my friend had years ago when she was in high school and she just still had it kind of hanging around. And, you know, I don't know if it ever worked, but. She was collecting typewriters since high school, huh? Yeah, that was back in the, probably the seventies. She had a collection hmm. and apparently her mom and dad moved and downsized, you know, some years oh, later, yeah. got rid of everything, so. I think it's interesting. The... It's interesting to see people that far back in the seventies collecting yeah. typewriters. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose there is just a natural fascination for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bill, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Very good. 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 <laughs> And Every Brian, Sunday. how are you? It's good to see you. We've been running you through the ringer, huh? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Are you are you feeling any better? Yes, I am. I'm doing doing better today. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And hello, William. Oh, is he frozen? Frozen. I think I frozen. Hello, good morning. Oh. How's it going? It is Canada, after all. I know. <laughs> Very stoic. Oh, camera is frozen. <laughs> that was bad. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> bye bye. I guess we're running two Zoom meetings on one router right now, so the bandwidth is pretty low. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll do the best we can, right? <laughs> All right, yeah. so uh, our, our typing prompt this time was actually from William. Uh, how can I just be myself with my typewriter? And uh, before I get into it, I, I do actually have a little bit of, a little bit of uh, show and tell here. So uh, yeah, uh, just a, a few items here. Um, actually, let me share the screen first. Because... Um, Trey Peters from the Modern Typewriter Group. Uh, he he participated in in last week's um, typing prompt. So hopefully you can see it. I am going to go ahead and read it as well. But can everybody see it? Yes. All right. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So this is, again was uh, Trey Peters. So conversation between a laptop and a typewriter. I, uh, was that William? 
<laughs> oh, okay. Uh, laptop preening. I have eight gigabytes of memory and a one terabyte hard drive typewriter. That's well. Laptop. I have a 17 inch screen. You don't have a screen, do you? Typewriter. Nope. Laptop or internet or internet access, right? Typewriter. Nope. Laptop. Look at my slideshow. Typewriter. Hey, maybe you could explain something to me. Laptop. Of course I can. I can Google anything. Typewriter. You won't work without electricity, right? Laptop. Well, no. Typewriter. So if there's no electricity, your person can't see what you have on that hard drive. Laptop. Well, if they didn't print it out. Typewriter. And why did your owner spend $329 on that external keyboard that, well, I'm sorry, looks and sounds like me? Laptop. I need to hibernate now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very good. So that was, again, was Trey Peters. So I appreciate him um, uh, posting that. Yes. And let me take off my, my, the back of my screen because I have something very interesting to show. I'm, whew, <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I'm, oh. I'm shifting from how things work on the iPhone to how things work on the computer. And, and it's, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's definitely different. <laughs> so let's see here. I am, what, oh yes, there we go. And choose virtual background and none. Okay. And I will make myself big because you guys will want to see this. Uh, spotlight. There we go. Okay. So um, at the end of December, uh, Joao uh, sent me a pen pal letter. And I just received it like the other day. And I was like, yes, I finally got it. Because <laughs> he told me it was coming and we, we thought for sure it was just lost in the mail. Um, so he, he's, he sent me yeah. this, this nice letter and he included this. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. That is <laughs> wonderful. I love that. So I'm I'm definitely gonna frame this. I love it. Um, yeah, very cool. Thank you so much, Joao. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I based it on a Royal P. I don't know if you have one of those, but no, it's one of the most interesting looking. Ones yeah, since. yeah, very good, very good. Yeah, so thank I'm you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm thinking about because th that's approximately postcard sized. It's an A6 yeah. size. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm considering doing my own postcards that way. So you should. Maybe. I'm concerned. I did get Bill's letter uh, just yesterday. No, uh, the day before yesterday. Cool. Uh, so thank you, Bill. I'll be responding to that this week. Sounds good. Uh, I, I, I'm curious about what typewriter you used. You didn't mention that. Yeah, it's slightly embarrassing. I, I think I after I um, had typed uh, out letters to about ten people, I finally realized maybe others would be interested in what machine I was using and started oh. to include that information. <laughs> um, uh, that's uh, my um, uh, nineteen sixty six Olympia SM nine uh, with the senatorial typeface. Uh, which was the first typewriter that I ever purchased okay. in large part cool. because of that typeface. I just, I, I love it. It's just kind of quirky. And uh, so um, I, I enjoy uh, using that machine quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the paper is very nice as well. And I was, uh, I thought the, the, the stamp was very interesting too. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they a, did a, a nice job with the international so well. stamps. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So thank you. You're mm -hmm. welcome. I'm glad you liked it. All right. So uh, let's see. The other thing uh, actually has to do with our 
typing assignment. Let me make it big again. Um, so I, I typed this, and, and I, I don't know how many people caught it, but last week I, I asked about the Remington Quiet Writer and asking if it was a good typewriter. And <laughs> here it is. So tell us. <laughs> so uh, let, me, let me bring it up close. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> And let me tell you, this thing, uh, this thing is very dirty inside. It works fairly well. Um, the the external condition is very good. You have some some scuffing there on on the, the front there, uh, but other than that, it's it's beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's pretty filthy inside. Oops. Ah. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to get in there and clean that. But uh, I do. I one of the issues with it, it does have a little bit of an escapement issue. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this, but the, the left, uh, yeah, the left hand margin has. I think someone referred to it as an overthrow. So basically, sometimes when you do the carriage return. It actually goes one one too far, basically. Uh, so my my left margin is all all wonky. <laughs> um, and a problem with that with a with a, one of my royal lights, except it's backwards. It seems like um, sometimes when I'll make a carriage return, it 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 goes um, one. It doesn't go quite far enough. <laughs> oh yeah. I wonder if it's the same, same issue. It, it it could be, and sadly, I'm not remembering how. I don't remember if it was Ted or if it was Joe uh, that was was telling me about it and suggesting how it might be fixed. And it, it's it's left my mind. Yeah, I think I think Chad knows the fix to that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, frankly, uh, Gregory, I applaud your embracing freestyle typing and have a feeling it's going to lead to a trend. So uh, you're 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 a groundbreaker, you know. You just oh. there. that's right. Thank you, thank you. Who needs to be constrained by left hand margins after all? I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> margins are overrated. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. From now on, I'm going to write everything centered, center justified. <laughs> as long as it's on the paper, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, before I do get in, into reading uh, my typing prompt here, unless someone else wants to go first, but I do want to say hi to a, a new member, Lee. Wow. How are you? <laughs> Welcome. Did you want to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I, I live in Yorkshire in England, and I think you know, um, Following the type of fear for quite a long time, but I've just never really had the confidence to join in. So I realized that actually now that you've set the typewriter club up, that it felt like it would be a really good thing to get involved with because I was watching a few of them and I really liked everybody and what you were all doing. Oh, so. very good. <laughs> I, I unzoomed, so you should be able to go ahead. Oh, so sorry. I didn't mean for you to have to. No, no, that's fine. No, yours is more important. Oh. <laughs> We're just practicing. But I am going to. Yeah, I'm not sure what that was, but <laughs> I needed it. <laughs> yeah. So... I, I've also been following Joe for a while because um, oh. I watched Joe. I, I actually watched Joe for quite a few years, actually. And um, just. Uh... <laughs> Hello, Joe. Hey there. I haven't ever really got involved with the group, but not personally, but I've always really loved it. And I've been doing my own typing in private, really. So, um, and collecting typewriters and using them. <laughs> so, you know, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was about time. It felt like it was the right time. Very so it's been cool. lovely to be here and thank you very much for letting me in. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. The more, the merrier, definitely. <laughs> We're a, a big, happy family here. <laughs> you found the right place. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Greg? Yes. Uh, can I jump in for a minute and just say something? Of course. Of course. Um, I 
I don't think anyone knows because I haven't said it, but uh, I had uh, surgery um, a couple of days ago. Had uh, brain surgery for uh, for Parkinson's. So I, I I have Parkinson's. That's one of the reasons that I, I gravitated to, to typewriters because my handwriting's gotten really bad over time. So I can always I can always type clearly on that, and um, it's something that I uh, surgery is something that I wanted to do for a long time, but I I've been scared about it, and I've just uh, in the process of recovering now, at the end of it, I should be um, less shaky and take less drugs and just be better off all around. So um, I'm going to say that. And uh, so if anyone would like to send me a get well card, um, I, I, I signed up for your um, type uh, pal. The pen pal list, yes. 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 I, I would love that. Very um, good. Very good. So that's... Um, I'm, and you, plug. You, you were you were already signed signed up um I thought from before was. right not not just recently right oh, i saw the one you just sent around and i wasn't on it yeah i don't think i've seen ryan on there before yeah oh no yeah i wanted to sign up for it but i didn't see it didn't see myself on the list so i added i sent you an email about it also okay and that <laughs> was just that was just recently uh just while you were talking earlier yeah oh okay okay Yes, I'll actually uh, send that out later today. Cool. And yes, yeah, because we we want to we want to uh, come to come to your aid and and you know cheer you up and and send good vibes your way. So definitely, I, I would love that. Thank you so much. Definitely, yes, definitely, yeah. Because you're where does where do you find the list to sign on to? Uh, it it goes through email. So um, oh. you you would sign up to the the newsletter so you okay. go to newsletter.typepals.com mm -hmm. and if you put your mailing address then you'll be added to the the pen pal list and it explains okay. it explains that in the form that you fill out um and there were three new additions uh uh last night um and i emailed those out to to the members so um <laughs> yeah yeah, but I'll 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 do a a bonus one for for our friend Brian. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> All right. So um, it does. It, but for, again, before I get started, does anyone have anything they want to share? Any any new acquisitions or anything like that? Well, I was before we kind of went live. I was talking about. Uh, rehabbing a underwood and um, it kind of fits in with your theme for the day about being at one with the the typewriter yes because as I'm working on it I got it early yesterday morning and um, it was just a mess you know the margins didn't work the t everything was seized up the carriage moved but it went you know the whole nine <laughs> yards and so uh, I'd never taken a Underwood apart, but I found this um, YouTube guy. He doesn't talk. He just has some weird music behind him. Oh. <laughs> and he has step by step how he uh, cleaned up. a, And he used WD-40 to clean it, which was just like maddening. But oh, boy. he did show the steps of taking this thing apart. And um, so I did. And it, it was like a... I didn't eat lunch. I didn't, you know, it was just, <laughs> it was, so uh, I become one with the machine when I'm sitting there trying to figure out what I'm doing with it, but I've got it here. <clears throat> I can, um, show that, hope it's bright enough. But it's got some nice uh, decals and stuff that that are uh, looking good, and it's uh, definitely it's good typing. Um, it's got a new. Um, it's from 1907. I put a silk ribbon in it, and uh, it's a little darker than. You know, it might need a little breaking in on that because it gets a little muddy looking. But I think it's the ribbon more than the type and i don't have um lifters for the keys so i didn't do anything with those i didn't want to bust anything up uh, yeah and um 
but it it's working everything's I mean, I, and um taking it apart isn't as hard as i thought it might be okay you know? so just, just looking at it is a little daunting for me <laughs> no it, it really i i could uh put the link to this kid he's got like about quite a few um youtube videos showing step by step you take this off there are two you know things here you take off and you know you can get the carriage off without too much trouble wow That's and great. then it's uh just a lot of cleaning yeah yeah <laughs> from decades of grime <laughs> yeah but anyway that's uh my zen of um typewriters i guess i like uh <laughs> typing on them and when i do a letter to friends i i got it mostly i got into it mostly because my handwriting's terrible and i wanted to write letters during the pandemic and um <laughs> i always talk about what i'm writing on and I think they think I'm probably pretty weird. Like, what do they care if it's the Olympia SG1 or, a, you know. I, a, a, I love that information. Yeah, I love to know that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we, we do. I don't know if the ordinary person cares, but it's, uh, in fact, I have nine um, uh, units that are, you know, somewhat mostly functional. And I wrote a letter to my sister, uh, each paragraph from a different one mm -hmm. with the different yeah. typefaces and That's stuff, cool. and a little bit about them. And her comment back is, uh, you got to clean up those um, type, you know, letters. You know, I think it was uh, using silk ribbons. They're a little bit muddier in the beginning, I think. But, and I thought, well, that's just great. Anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to clean my ribbons. My yeah. Slugs. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I said, I don't want to clean my type slugs. <laughs> well, obviously, I had just, you know, gotten them and cleaned them up. And so the type slugs were not the problem. But, you know, I get this. Anyway. So, but I do um, enjoy writing a letter if I'm not feeling particularly perky for the day i'll think of who i can write a letter to nice yes nice. very good welcome dan how are you good morning everyone i'm doing all right good if good. i uh, if, if i duck in and out today i've got the boys here today oh, so, okay <laughs> so i will be back i just be coming and going so okay okay our boys <laughs> yeah, how are you hello i'm fine a little Excellent. late but i'm fine that's okay and i'm styling yeah oh, yeah <laughs> i got a hat i can wear with my headphones uh yeah I, that's what i love about this kind of uh, this kind of hat it's it's very flat so you can just put headphones over it if you need mm -hmm. to i have my headphones here just in case uh, oh you can't see it i can <laughs> pieces of it floating in and out of existence <laughs> Um, I, earlier, uh, I think even before we went live, I was saying how, uh, I bought a new computer this week, actually just yesterday. And, uh, I have a separate HD webcam. So things are a little different, but it, it's going to make it much like I can see everybody right now. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And one of the first programs I installed, but have yet to use, <laughs> uh, well, have yet to use on this computer. OBS. Yes. Ah. <laughs> so maybe that'll come next week. I, I want to make sure um, that I get a, you know, a nice setup going. I, uh, you know, I have to keep up with, with uh, you and, and Curry and uh, I think it's May that also uses it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> we're uh, oh, yeah. pushing you forward into the 21st century. I know. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And hello to David. How are you? <laughs> just wave <laughs> oh there you go doing good. good good very good <laughs> welcome hi sorry i Hello, never said hi when i first came hi on. diane how are you i'm fine i'm i'm cleaning dust from 1895 <laughs> <laughs> mm, breathe it in right there with you well maybe not that old but <laughs> 
no, but this machine is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that a new Smith Premier? No, this is the one with the. I forget if we. I think we said it was Norwegian type on it. Oh um, yeah. I just never quite got around to cleaning it. Uh, I I pulled one off. I thought it was a different one because I was gonna I was gonna try to do a little repair, but I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't this isn't right. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, well, since I've got it out, I might as well clean it. <laughs> yeah, this is serial number 408, which is older oh. than what Ted has on his type on his um, uh, site for Smith Premier number four. So I, that, so that's why I said 1895. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that works. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, very that good. Means, that means, Diane, that you're going to have to get that registered on Ted's site on the oh, typewriter. It is, it is, it is, is it? On okay. Site, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's got it up. I'm well aware of it. <laughs> yeah. it, seems like, it seems like Diane is good about that, putting her typewriters on the database. Uh, I'm a little behind right now, but but all my Smith premieres are up there, I think. Well, I I have about forty typewriters to, to put on there, so yeah. <laughs> I, have to not I know. Do it. <laughs> I haven't put any of mine up there yet. I still have to. Um, I I made an account, but I I haven't done the uh, uh the, I haven't registered as a typewriter hunter yet. Oh okay. See, see me cry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Make Ted cry. Had the time. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, look at this grown man crying. Yes. You don't want him to cry. <laughs> you don't want you don't, that to happen. Uh, don't let Ted cry. Register your typewriter today. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Today's slogan. That's right. You don't. You don't want all of the typewriters, right? You just want. No, we want them all. No, he wants them all. I want <laughs> all of them. Give them all to me. It's like this old uh, Underwood. I just did you'd want the serial number and a picture absolutely I sure. love it. Of course. Hmm. we the want more you to participate that, yeah yeah the more typers that are on there the more information we all have yeah we have better granularity is what we call it yes there you but go there, yeah. there's a lot of repetition then <laughs> <laughs> every typewriter is unique it is not yeah. repetition exactly <laughs> all right so uh, I think we've done all the greetings. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my, again, well, my invisible sheet here. <laughs> okay. Um, how can I just be myself with my typewriter? And again, again, this was done on my, my brand new uh, Remington Quiet Writer. And, uh, uh, you know, it has its faults, but overall it types really well. So, um, all right, here we go. The typewriter is empowering and enabling. Seated at my typewriter, I am removed oh. from my humble mask, allowed to be confident, cocky even. I am good with words. I am a damn good writer, in fact. There, I've said it. My mask prefers, demands really, that I say I have good communication skills. But I know that is an understatement. The typewriter accepts that I am fallible, it encourages me to blow past my mistakes. It discourages me from even fixing them. My mask of perfection is stripped away. The typewriter is my confidant. I can put words and ideas to paper that I would never let escape from my mouth. Silly or controversial or abstract or imperfect, the typewriter doesn't judge. It only records not caring where we wander. With the typewriter, there is no writer's block. The words just come. There is no performance anxiety. The typewriter sits quietly between thoughts, knowing the next line, the, knowing the next in the line of succession of ideas is forming somewhere between my eyes. The typewriter has been there for me through the most unsettling year of my life. I haven't needed to put words trending in our uncertain times to paper, words like pandemic and infection and contagious, nor the names of our enemy, coronavirus and COVID-19. 
The typewriter remains solid, like the anvil under the blacksmith's hammer as he shapes words into swords. But these words, the typed words on the page, will cut no one. Instead, their gleam shines as a beacon of comfort and acceptance and peace. The gleaming blades of typed words cut away my masks, leaving only my true self. And that was done on the Remington Rand Quiet Rider, 1958. Very nice, Gregory. Thank you. Snaps. Poetry slam. <laughs> Typing slam. I know, huh? <laughs> we don't want to slam typewriters. <laughs> Very good. All right. Does I, anyone else have one? I, I did. I did write mine. Mine's a little bit long and uh, meandering, so it's kind of more probably a first draft, but um, that I could kind of con you know get more concise. But um, but uh, basically, I, I just I titled it "Writing Therapy." Um, over this past year, I have discovered the important role that typewriters have played in my life throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Not only have they enabled me to connect to others through the writing of letters during these times of social distancing, they have enabled me to connect to myself and sort through my thoughts, fears, frustrations, and everything I'm experiencing as a result of these uncertain times I find myself in. This past year has been a difficult adjustment for all of us. There's some comfort in knowing that we are all in this boat together but each of us has been affected differently and we have and we have all had to come to grips with this new reality. New routines, changes to old ones and the current political climate we find ourselves in have made life more difficult to navigate. I consider myself relatively lucky in that all I have had to deal with are mostly minor inconveniences in the grand scheme of things. I have not lost anyone close to me. I have not been out of work and I have not been sick myself. I realize there are enormous challenges many people are facing as a result of this pandemic that I myself have not had to deal with. While this is something I'm grateful for, and I do try to keep my things in, persp in perspective as best as I can, it is easy to minimize and even ignore one's own struggles in the context of what other people are going through. The reality is we are all struggling in our own ways in varying degrees. There have been a lot of things to come to terms with, and it can be overwhelming. Even if we have to talk to someone or even if we want to talk to someone, we may not know where to start, or we may not even realize how much of how much we are struggling, or we may be afraid to admit it to ourselves. Um, in my case, I suffer from generalized anxiety disorder and health anxiety, and before the pandemic, I had gotten it mostly under control. But like many others who suffer from a mental health issue, it got a lot worse uh, during the pandemic. I have a tendency to let negative thoughts run rampant circles in my head and they often get the best of me. This is where typewriters have made a dramatic difference in my life. When I'm overwhelmed by anxious thoughts, the simple act of writing them down has proven to be invaluable in a number of ways. Being able to get the thoughts out of my head and onto the page brings structure and clarity to them. When, in, when I'm able to name and see my enemy, it becomes more manageable and has a little less power over me. Typewriters force me to slow down and find the right words to say and in doing so, I'm able to process the emotions I'm feeling and bring order to the chaos. Being that typewriters provide a physical tactile experience that I can engage with through all five senses, well, maybe not all of them, I'm not tasting my typewriters, they also help me to become more grounded in the present moment. I can find, or I can focus on the sound of the type buyers hitting the platen and the feeling of the keys on my fingertips and the resistance as I press them in the, in the sight of my thoughts becoming words on the paper. Typewriters have also enabled me to connect with other people on a deeper and more personal level. I have been able to talk about everything going on in the world with people that are close to me through letters. And I have discovered an entire community of people on the internet who are all passionate about typewriters, which I can be a part of. During these times of social distancing, it is a place where I feel I can be myself in the company of other like-minded people. And I feel a little less isolated. Wow. Oh, that was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, those some, absolutely yeah. wonderful. Very good. Those, those are some powerful words. That I, I think I, I Eric, I think that you have um I'm not sure the word, but uh, have captured the feeling of many of us. For me for sure. Absolutely yeah. for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Wow. Very good. Very nice. Thank you so much for sharing that, Eric. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you for listening. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that did not for sound like making it possible. <laughs> What's that? Oh, really? 
and I said, and, and for making it possible, you know, to oh, be able to share this, you know, with of course everyone. And <laughs> but yeah, that did not sound like a, a first draft. <laughs> no, thank you. I, 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 I thought maybe I, I, it kind of seemed a little rambly because I kind of, uh, it took me a while to get to the point where I started talking about the typewriters, <laughs> but no, I, you, oh, that was wonderful. Yeah, that, that's, that's yes. kind of what it's about, you know, uh, putting, putting it in context. So <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now mine so, seems a little slightly disjointed. Uh, mine is definitely like it was. It was partly stream of consciousness. So it's, it's mine is very rough, but that sounded really good. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Well, I guess I could go. Okay. I I will first preface this by saying I thank you, Bill, for your letter, and I love your letterhead. Me too. And your ad your return address printed on the le the envelopes is really neat. You did a great job. Let me reach your off camera and grab my paper out of my KMM. And by the way, I found I was going through my my stack of old typing paper and I found some onion skin, some Stuart Hall onion skin wow. pad yeah. that I had. So and it actually works pretty good in the old KMM here. So let's see. Okay. See, the thing is, it doesn't judge you. It just sits there like a robot without arms. You are its arms, its hands, its fingers. It's like the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. It doesn't have a brain. You supply the brain power, the thinking. So the machine, it's not going to outthink you or think of itself as superior or you as inferior. It doesn't have a heart to speak of, though it has little mysterious bits that seem to beat with a rhythm equal to my touch as if it had a heart, but I know better. It's not logical for it to have a heart, knowing it's just made of metal and rubber bits and bobs. And yet it seems to have a heart in the sense that my heart beats in sync with its. It's not alive in the sense of biologically alive. Maybe it's like a virus not able to reproduce without the agency of a host. I'm like that host. And together we are able, the both of us as one, to create new things that haven't been seen or thought of before. Together, we make new things. Without our union, we are both dead inside. I'm convinced of that. And that is how I've come to know that I can just be myself with my typewriter, because I am able to write things I otherwise would not be able to do. I can say things to paper that, I ha haven't, that I've had a difficult time saying to even my closest friend or even my spouse. It's really being able to come clean with yourself. The typewriter makes that possible. You can't have a healthy relationship with the rest of humankind without first coming to grips with your inner self. And so anchoring your inner self to this machine helps you bring out those inner thoughts like, well, like clockwork, which is just what the typewriter is, a clock of the heart. Very good. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. I wish I had an A but <laughs> uh, the talent you guys have in writing. I just am horrible. <laughs> But you know, it, it's it's not about how how good we are at writing or how bad we are. It's about getting words on the page. So, yeah. my 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 anything I write is generally just ramblings of thought. That's anything that crosses my mind, and I don't know if anybody else would even want that's to. That's where it. to start. No. That yeah. is where you start, Dan. You yeah. get the you get those uh, rambling thoughts on the paper, and then you can look at them and say, "Hmm, I can see a pattern here." Now I can retype the. That now, now I can link this together with a, uh, with a thread, and if I want to retype them as a, a continuous a train of thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like I we probably it. all feel like we're just rambling when we're when we're writing until we actually read it to somebody else and <laughs> and yeah, it resonates yeah. with read somebody. my blog sometime. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kind of did that with my uh, my dad's eulogy. I had no idea what I was going to say. And so the morning of the funeral, I woke up at like four till five and came in here and I sat down to a typewriter and, and just typed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't, sure. it, it was just, it, the words were just coming out. On top of that, the emotions were coming out as well. So. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you, Mike? Oh, he's frozen. I'm oh, great. <laughs> good, good. Your picture, but we hear you. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. I don't know why it's bad. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm here anyway. Very good. Very good. Excellent. How are things in your part of the world? Oh, it's terrific. I just got back from outside. It's trying to warm up again. So spring's making a mad effort to hit us up here in the Northwest. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think it was actually in the 40s this morning and not oh, down wow. in the 30s and I didn't have to deal with frost. And I, but I think the rain's happening. Yeah, it's heading, heading my way. Okay, okay. <laughs> Very good. All right, does anyone else have a typing prompt? If you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Um, this was my first draft. I read it to my wife, Juliana. She said, leave it as it is. Don't mess with it. It's powerful the way it is. So how can I just be myself in my typewriter? How can I just be myself in myself my typewriter? First off, uh, uh, first of all, who exactly am I? I need to know this before I can define myself. To ask the broader question, who are we? Are we who others say we are? Are we who we tell ourselves we are? Are we simply a sum of our experiences? Is there more to us than what we see in the mirror? Are we content with who we are at the moment? Or do we think we can be someone better than our current selves? If we could be a better version of ourselves, what improvements would we like to see? Are, we, are the improvements within the realm, realms of reality or are we simply blue sky? Let's come back to who we are at the moment. When we meet friends in the street and they ask us how we, and they ask us how we are, do we tell them the truth or do we simply say, I'm fine? Do our friends tell us the truth or do they just tell us the same lie that they're fine? Let's take a minute and imagine a scenario where a friend asks you how you're doing. When you ask a friend how they're doing and they ask us if we have time for coffee together so we can all, so we can, he can tell us, so they can tell us how they're really doing. Would we accept their invite to sit down with them and have a real heart to heart talk? Or do we brush them off and tell them we don't have time at the moment? If we say we don't have time to listen to our friends, can we honestly expect our friends to have time to listen to us? No, was I? Uh, in one of Michael Jackson's songs, Michael talks about starting with the man in the mirror. That being said though, talking to a mirror isn't that much different to talking to a brick wall just like, just like Shirley Valentine used to. We need someone who has infinite patience, doesn't talk back, remembers everything we tell them, but will never tell on us. Here's where I believe a typewriter can be our best friend, our confidant, our therapist. We can tell our part of anything and everything that's on our mind, in our heart, and bothering our soul. We may type just one or two pages, or we may type enough to fill half a book. Once we have told our typewriter everything that's on our mind, we know that all those thoughts are safely on paper and put away in a filing cabinet, so we can let go of them and free up our minds. The next time we meet our friend on the street, our mind is clear, our thoughts are free of all the things that we, that had us weighed down um, for, for so long, that we can say to our friend, do you still want to have that coffee and tell me what's, t tell me all that's on your mind? Maybe I can help you to unload your problems the same way I unload your mind. Who knows how much more free we all feel if we just let ourselves be ourselves with our time. <laughs> Very good. That's wonderful. Thanks, William. Very, very good. Okay. Uh, I didn't exactly flow very well, but the thoughts were there. It was good. The message is there. Well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's interesting. Um, you're talking about 
And um, when <laughs> when I'm not looking in a mirror, I I think of myself as like a 15 year old. And then mm-hmm. I look in the mirror, I see my gray hair, I see all my wrinkles. I'm like, wow, I don't think I'm 15. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's interesting the way we perceive ourselves and um, that moment of looking in the mirror and, and, and seeing, or at least getting a glimpse of how the world sees us, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. And, and how those two things can be very, very different. <laughs> I do have one uh, quick question for, for everyone here. When I started typing this, I thought my train of thought was going to go in a, completely different, in a completely different direction. But the subject almost took on a mind of its own and led me to where, where it wanted to go. Yeah, I, I had a very, my, mine was definitely a very similar experience. Um, I, I really had no idea where I was going with mine. And it, oftentimes that's how my writing is, is particularly at a typewriter. I'll start writing and, you know, I'll have a very, very vague idea of what I want to do. I start typing and it just kind of starts. It's, it's like uh, a road is being revealed to me. <laughs> find the flow (laughs) it's a very interesting process so hi sean how are you good guys how are you happy sunday happy sunday to you happy sunday i hope everybody's doing well yeah (laughs) yeah we haven't seen you in a while and how are things in in your world it'd be been yeah really busy but otherwise really good you know it's uh, just sort of one of those periods of time where uh, the real world, unfortunately, takes you away and sucks a bit of the energy out that you'd normally want to put into things that are way more enjoyable, but unfortunately, don't always pay the mortgage. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, quick, uh, quick question. Sean, um, yep. a, couple, a few weeks ago, I mentioned that I thought I'd talk to you on, um, on one of the sites, but I, I actually talked to somebody at YEG type artists, not YYC type artists. Oh. Yeah. So sorry about that. No, no, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. My uh, Edmonton colleague, I guess you could say. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so that's where that that that's where that confusion started. Yeah. No worries. That's all good. It happens. Okay. We got yeah. airport. We both use our airport codes, so it's bound mm-hmm. to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, say, say hi to to Juliana. Hello. 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 Hi. Oh, look at the love. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. Oh, shush. <laughs> so, Sean, you're in uh, Canada. Yes, I'm in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. You bet. You wouldn't have a uh, torpedo technical manual, would you? Oh, I'm for. I'm afraid I don't. Um, I've got everything. <laughs> I've got everything else, but <laughs> I'll keep asking it. Yeah. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know what? That one day you ask that somebody that you just do not think will have one will be like, "Oh yeah, I got like two coffees back here." Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Bree. <clears throat> I've been at home for over a year now, and rarely am I alone. So what does it mean to be myself? Do I really know? As Am I myself when working from home for my job or helping my wife with hers? Can I be myself when riding my bike either outdoors around town and through the nearby countryside or indoors on a smart trainer, riding with thousands of others online through virtual worlds? Since I've collected all these typewriters, 43 of them to be exact, I'm rarely far from them. So does that make them part of who I am, whether I am using them or not? And when I am using them, it is often to write letters to people I don't know very well, who either share in my typewriter passion or to those who just really need an outside connection or words of encouragement. Other times I'm able to be more creative writing poems about cats or sushi or where I live, 
but the mood has to be right. I enjoy learning, and that is something I can do often with typewriters, either learning from others or discovering on my own. It is satisfying being able to clean or fix a typewriter, although that often means machines that are in less than perfect working condition can be brought home and added to the collection. I'm not sure whether that ends up being good or bad. I think ultimately being myself with my typewriters means sharing them, sharing my enjoyment of them, what I've learned, applying newfound skills, or sharing what I've created with them. I hope that when COVID improves or is gone, that I will be able to share my typewriters more by hosting a type in. And in the meantime, I may need to start my own typewriter business or at the very least start my own blog, both of which take commitment. In the meantime, I'll continue my journey of discovery, writing, sharing, and hunting for more typewriters, which have become a big part of who I am. Very good. Not right. Nice. nice. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So I, I think I, uh, we have a similar number of uh, typewriters uh, I, I said 40 off the top of my head, but it's, it's entirely <laughs> possible I have 42, 43. Well, it, particularly because I, I have two on the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, uh, I, I finally scored uh, Olympia SF from the 60s. I have one from the 50s. But I particularly wanted one from the 60s because that is Ian Fleming's uh, typewriter. So um, I have that on the way. It looks Where did you find it at, Gregory? It was uh, Shop Goodwill. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I guess I don't check there often enough. Yeah, it was, it was on there. Of course, they didn't, they didn't um, advertise it as an SF. But, sure. you know, I, I, I think I've learned a couple things. <laughs> so... <laughs> now watch i'm going to get it and it's going to be a completely different typewriter <laughs> <laughs> but it, in the pictures it did look a little grungy but i it looks like stuff that is probably going to be able to wipe off um uh, that i can handle better than like the, the i'm pointing to this one <laughs> the, the one that's really behind me um you know it's super grungy inside so that that to me is more daunting than one that's dirty on the outside obviously so uh um i'm not too worried about it and if i can get it cleaned up i'll be very very happy um yeah because my my 50s era sf is definitely one of my favorite uh typewriters uh ultra portable especially um so getting the the james bond um typewriter um, that's, that's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. I got interested in the, uh, Lawrence Berlinghetti, um, typewriter. That was a Remington and it's in a museum and he, uh -huh. he painted on it. Um, um, look plus think, and then he put LF on the side. I mean, it's a beat up horrible looking unit but i looked around and there was the same model a couple hours away and i was thinking about it and it was like a desktop and i don't need any more desktops and then it was gone so uh, <laughs> the moment passed <laughs> but it is tempting <laughs> i know i know <laughs> uh i i did I, what was that Oh, maybe that was background noise. <laughs> um, I, I did find on the uh, I think on Richard Thanks, Holt's website that um, he has a he has a list of uh, I think it's mostly authors, but I think there's like some like songwriters and maybe artists as well on on the list of um, the typewriters that they use. So I was very pleased to find that, and um, uh, you know just out of curiosity of some of the, the authors that I enjoy and, and the typewriters that they use. So I can kind of, you know, visualize now knowing some of the models, 
And uh, that, that's a, a fun thing to do. And then it inspires you to try and get one in your collection. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, does anyone have any, anything else to show? Or, or uh, do we have another typing prompt? I, I did the prompt. OK. Go ahead, Bill. Um, this is the, obviously a very uh, cathartic experience, William. So uh, I had numerous uh, attempts at this, um, most of which seemed to end up around three pages. And uh, that was when the uh, topic was taking me wherever it wanted. And I decided I wanted to take this where I wanted to go. And I got it down to three paragraphs. So um, uh, I, I ended up with this. This week's typing prompt asks, how can I just be myself with my typewriter? I have now typed up numerous different responses to this prompt, many of which were far too personal to share with a group of people who don't know me all that well. After reflecting on this for an additional period of time, I believe that I've come up with an answer that satisfies me and that I can share with others. If asked, how can I just be myself with my typewriter? My answer would be that you simply don't have any other choice. While we are capable of exploring the deepest of depths and the tallest of heights when it comes to investigating ourselves or envision envisioning realities other than our own through our writing, it does not change the fact that it all comes out of us and when we type it out on paper. This is pretty straightforward in my mind. The follow-up question that I would ask is, are you happy with yourself and if not, what do you plan to do about it? That is a prompt of another sort and one that I simply don't have the time to expand on or to share with others right now, but I do know that it is possible. Very good. That's Thank it. Thank you so much, Bill. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, kind of like the second half of paragraph one. Um, uh oh, you're, uh, we can tend to be who we are at the moment, or do we think we can be someone better than our current selves? Mm. Oh, have we frozen? So, a little, yeah, I, I picked up the last uh, uh, sentence, I think, but I, I, I get to just, I, I recall your um, uh, words when you read them out originally. Um, so, so I've mm -hmm. been. Uh, through um, uh, some some therapy for mental health issues, um, both uh, in a group setting and uh, individual therapy. And um, uh, people have said a couple of things, um, and I reflect back upon that time. Uh, Eric, you, you, you talked about... Um, uh, I guess... Um, Gosh, what was, what did you touch on that um, in your writing? It made me think of a, a, a comment that somebody made when I was in group therapy that um, when you're sharing, um, you know, your um, your pains or your issues that you're dealing with, or in this case, your writing, it, it's not a competition. You know, we're, we're each um, undergoing our own uh, path in life, our own experience. And uh, in the end, it's just about whether you care to share or not. You know, I think that's what, what counts. That's what matters. And, um, uh, and then Dan made me uh, think of um, uh, something as well when he, when he talked about his, his, his rambling. And, um, and, and I think we all just kind of uh, feel that way you know, um, at, at times, and, and, and it's, um, I would, you know, the same thing, I'd respond that, you know, it's just, it's not a competition, it's just, uh, just about uh, putting things out there, and um, if this group in particular is an incredibly uh, receptive um, bunch of folks, and so I, I couldn't imagine a better place uh, to get started with, with uh, writing than in, in front of you all. Very well good. Said, well, Appreciate yeah, that. And I, I, I agree um, with uh, you know what you said about kind of um, you know like it's not a competition like in terms of the writing. Um, you know we're you know we, we may be writing for other people or we, we may be writing for ourselves, but I think um, you know the the work that 
we write about um, it's, it's you know if, if we're writing for ourselves we don't we shouldn't you know worry about what other people think you know it, it, the important thing is having written and uh, you know you can kind of discover a lot of things um, just through the process of writing um, and I, I think that that's you know what this kind of what this prompt kind of touches on is um, you know really discovering you know what what's going on. Um, you know, from your perspective, you know, what, what's going on in your life. Um, and you can, you can choose to share that with other people, or you can choose to just kind of let it be what it is. And, um, and just, you know, be glad that, you, you know, you were able to kind of put it into, into context, because, you know, being able to put something into language kind of brings structure and clarity to it in a way that I feel can be kind of difficult when it's just kind of floating around in your head. And it just be, it becomes a little bit less overwhelming, you know, just kind of having, having that, um, that structure, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah it, this is definitely uh, uh, revealing how, how powerful the typewriters are and, and the experience of typing is um, and, and what it means to us. Um, a lot of what I'm hearing right now is is uh, a testament to to the fact that you know, and it, again, this is something we've touched on in a few uh, live streams now. The, the the therapeutic effects of typing and and, oh, yeah. and getting things on paper and getting out of our systems, and so I, I'm hearing that, and it just makes me really appreciate. Um, the whole typewriter revival and and that you know we're keeping this this wonderful uh intimate tool alive so yeah i, I really appreciate you guys participating in this because again william it was a, a fantastic um uh typing prompt so yeah does anyone else have uh, either anything they'd like to show or maybe a typing prompt or a question? Anything of that sort? I'll show something real briefly. I was going through my stack of letter writing clutter over there. In fact, I, you probably saw me typing up a postcard, a Tony the Tiger postcard, oh. <laughs> cereal box to this young kid in California who was using stickers. But uh, when I was going through this, I realized I had this postcard. This was actually a piece of artwork that my grandson had made. Maybe, you know, well, he's 21 now. So this was probably, who knows, 12 years ago or something like that. And uh, of course, it's it's Mars themed, which is kind of timely right now, right? But I, so this is a card, right? So we had these, there was some online thing where you could send in an image and they, they'll make cards for you, you know? So anyway, oh, and we also have, uh, postage stamps made with the same uh, artwork, oh, yeah. right? Oh, so that's cool. So you you can gonna, do that. I yeah, think that's possibility. yeah. There is. A, I, for, I forget now how we did it. It's been so long. But this was this website was website was art stamps, art stamps. I guess so. Anyways, so uh, age eight. Noah was age eight when we did this. So anyways, so I'm going to be. Uh, typing up some letters and maybe stick a few letters in that card. But I was kind of wanting to think about thinking about what you guys had been talking about just a while ago, um, the power of writing and how typewriters help us to get out of ourselves and kind of reach a deeper place. And um, that got me thinking down the line or down the thought trail of the current age we live in is what has been called the post-truth era, if you know what I mean. Uh, in other words, if you're if you're engaged at all in in uh, mass media, consuming mass media, you're you're probably the target of propaganda from multiple sources, right? Agreed. And, and it's not just political, but it, it is a lot of that. And so, I think one of the signs of that of healthiness is being able to step outside of that influence and being able to sit down at a typewriter and write something that challenges your basic assumptions about life and about yourself, maybe 
And that is, that's a healthy thing because it, uh, it shows that you're still down deep, you're still thinking. There's something going on in you and you down deep and you're not accepting the propaganda uh, that we are fed, right? And I think that's important to keep doing as, as creative people, to keep challenging the assumptions and uh, reaching down deep within us to find something better. I agree. Absolutely. Yep. I'm in. <laughs> we, I think we all need to find our own truth in a lot of situations. Yeah. Uh, I know one thing that I've been doing lately, um, and I'm sure I probably speak for a lot of people the last year, it seems like uh, the only thing people want to talk about is politics and COVID. And frankly, I just, I'm just weary of it. So, and it, it, it dragged me down into, I don't know if I'd say a depression, but it just, it just got me into a, into a negative energy place that I felt. So what I've been doing is uh, I get the house quiet uh, when the, the boys are with their mom, especially I'll sit and I'll, I'll just type out positive things on the typewriter because, you know, people forget sometimes I think that this world is full of a lot of good things, a lot of wonderful people. I'm talking to a bunch of them right now. And I'm very thankful to Gregory that he brought us all together because it was getting to the point where it's like, you don't even want to get out of bed. You, you turn on the news and then it's just, it's bad. Um, the COVID, that, how happy is that? I mean, come on. So I made it a point to search out good things because the more I wrote or typed, I should say, the more I realized that I, there's more positive in my life than negative. And that has helped me a lot. And when I can put it on a typewritten piece of paper, mm -hmm. to me, I'm, I'm bolstering the positive things I write with a machine that I love, which mm -hmm. on a piece of paper that is now tactile, brings me back to a, an era of simpler times, which is another positive in my life. So to me, it's a win-win. And I keep these pieces of paper. And if I'm in a bad mood, I'll just go back to them. And uh, very quickly, it turns my mood around. Hmm. So I don't know if that sounds crazy, but it's helped me. Mm, no, nope. I don't know. That, not clear at all. Yeah. I think there's actually a, a typing prompt in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know listing the positive things in your life yeah there are so many good things right in this world there are so many i mean even even technology i mean the, the thing that that we're on mars think of the engineering behind that yeah. that's incredible whether we ever go to mars or not it doesn't matter to me i just think it's a positive incredible thing that that mankind was able to do something like that so to me that's a positive and i wrote that down so very good yeah, there's anyway. definitely a lot of, you know, negativity in the news and everywhere yeah. you go. And it's kind of hard to escape. And, um, you know, being able to sort through all that and kind of, um, you know, focus on the more positive things is really important. Because um, we, we are kind of hardwired to focus on, the, you know, the negative things. Mm -hmm. and, and it can be kind of hard to sort through all that through all the noise and, you know, Right. You know, be able to pull out anything positive and being able to kind of, you know, see it in front of you can help you focus on that um, in a way that you can't really do just, you know, thinking about it. Like you're, you're going to, you know, nine times out of 10, you're always going to go to the, to the negative things when, when you're just thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> that, it that's seems how, it, easier. how it is for me. Yeah. Me too. I really appreciate Dan, you talking about the Mars uh, the probe that just landed. Oh, I love that. I, I get a, up. Uh, yeah, I've been a fan of the space program since, you know, I'm old enough to remember watching Apollo 11 live on TV as a kid. But, Me too. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I just saw something um, this week. I read something that I'll share with you guys. And it's it's more certainly much more on the lighthearted, humorous side of things. But, you know, of course, uh, Neil Armstrong's famous saying, uh, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Well, when he stepped back into the spaceship for the last time on the planet, on the moon and, and to blast off, he said, good luck, Mr. Gorski. And for years, nobody knew what that meant. 
Uh, and they, they thought, well, it sounds like a Russian name. Maybe he's talking about a Russian astronaut or something like that, right? And so it wasn't until maybe the late 90s, or early 2000s during an interview that some interviewer asked him, what was that all about? And he says, well, we had neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Gorski, and we were playing uh, baseball in an empty field behind their house one day. And the baseball went out along their fence and I had to go out to the fence to retrieve it. And when I went out there, I overheard them arguing. They were yelling at each other. And Mrs. Gorski was saying, you want sex? You want sex? You'll get sex when the kid next door walks on the moon. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> oh, my. That's hilarious. Wow. It's a true oh, story. God. Apparently, it was a true story. I, I <laughs> believe that. <laughs> oh, so really... good luck, Mr. Gorski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a true co pilot right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Wingman, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> In several senses, he's a wingman. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. It's hard to follow that one up, but um, there was a, a movement um, some years ago about radical gratitude and, um, you know, just the whole it, kind of a mindfulness thing, but you can do it even driving down the road, you Sweet. know, being grateful that there's a road and that there are people yes. who take care of it. And there were people who built it and there were people who provided the ingredients to make this all happen and the engineers and the on and on and on and it's just layer on layer on layer of everything we take for granted it's that true. really we could be quite grateful for yes, yes i'd be grateful if um when i was taking apart this old thing the uh let's see can you see that yeah the, oh, yes the ribbon had this on it mm -hmm. um is that sort of a usual thing in the old I've never old seen this. Yeah. Because the the reel didn't actually have like a little thing to stick it in. You, you hooked it on that and then mm. um, yeah. that, I would explain um, it. Wasn't sure if that was a common thing or just some weird thing. It might it might have been common in the era of this machine that you can't see because of my cat now. <laughs> <laughs> because because there's one on each at each end of the ribbon spool. <laughs> yeah, um, this, it's literally pinned on here. Um, there's a strip of cloth that goes into the uh, the spool itself, and um, let's see if I can. Wow, turn it. that's a huge ribbon. I know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So this has actually been pinned on here. Um, I don't know if you can actually see the pin if I turn a flashlight on it. Oh yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Wow. So um, makes the ribbon kind of hard to change though. Um, it's something I thought I should do a video on, but you know what? Eh, I don't know. <laughs> it's gloves and, and yuck. and. <laughs> you, you should do a video, Diane. We need more typewriter videos. <laughs> exactly, I agree. You can never have too many. Yeah. I agree too. <laughs> Lynn, your uh, clip looked like it was uh, plastic that was clipped No, on, it's on metal. Ribbon. Is it metal? Yeah, there's... Um, Is it brass, maybe? A grommet, and then... Yeah. So, so I think all that is, that is it's just... Oh, okay. I see it now. It, it just connects then, to the spool to so it can take yeah, up. Uh, I've, yeah. got, I've got spools like that, too. Um, that aren't on older machines it just kind of it's just uh it when, when you're winding the ribbon on to the spool it just kind of keeps it in place it kind of it's hard to describe it's, <laughs> it's the anchor it's yeah, the anchor yeah, that exactly. holds the ribbon on onto the spool kind of like these ones oh my hello <laughs> oh you got them <laughs> and there you go and oh, we know where <laughs> They so where do you get those, uh, William? <laughs> if I can get a close-up. Where do you find those uh, eyelets or grommets? William? I just happened to uh, come across someone who was who was selling the assets of an old type of repair shop, and I got like 
a two pound bag of these and eyelids and other bits and pieces. And so if anybody is looking for a bunch of these, just give me a holler. <laughs> um, give Berg a holler, he has my email address, forward the email to me and yeah, we can definitely get some sent off to you. Nice. Let's see, I've got probably, I'm gonna say a couple of hundred here. Wow. I haven't counted them, but there's quite a lot of them. So, Joe? Yes? I have something you probably uh, get a kick out of. Um, before I finally started blogging and came up with a better outlet for um, all of my excitement over typewriters, um, I was um, telling everybody writing everybody I could just to talk about typewriters. Um, and one of those people included Tom Hanks. Um, I actually got a, a letter back from him. No kidding. And you oh. can see, look at his um, <laughs> oh. graphic here. <laughs> Playton, yeah. So it, I thought that was Pretty cool. Obviously, he's he's uh, really into uh, space exploration. I guess after his movie projects that involved the uh, the topic, so um, that was kind of fun. And then you were uh, talking about your um, stamps that you had made, which I'm going to have to investigate that because I've taken a, a real interest in um, doing my own. Uh, stationary design and so this is the latest one I came up with um, I'm, I like that I'm one faking my own agencies just so I can come up with some <laughs> different uh, <Yeah>. ideas <laughs> and I uh, your one this... page made me laugh <laughs> oh yeah yeah I, I, I forgot about that um, I did a press it's... release and everything just for fun out on one type page and <laughs> the funny thing about it all is I go to all this effort you know, uh, to have some fun with this. And I did the one type page thing. I direct people over to my blog and the first comment I get from Ted and I had misspelled stationary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, not so really moving that fast, right? It's not really moving that fast. Yeah. Well, so that's, I was talking about how, uh, you know, I like to change my, my, uh, design up. My wife has this laser printer so I can crank these things out, you know, change it up easily. And, <laughs> Um, I, I, I could have said something about, you know, avoiding my stationary from becoming stationary. And um, <laughs> the funniest thing is I almost used letterhead instead, and I would have avoided the whole uh, the situation. But Which when I, I saw learned. Ted's comment, I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to slip that one past me. Oh, uh, it was perfect. Just just the, the, just the, uh, the spelling of the word and a big grin. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that nails so, it. So, Bill, these uh, these stamps we had done back in 2007, but it's the website is www.myartstamps.com. Myartstamps.com. So, I actually use a, a website called uh, stamps.com, and they used to have that feature where you could you could. Uh, uh, upload your your photo or whatever and and print it out on the stamps and i was going to do that the other day and apparently they removed that feature so it'll be handy to have that that website so thank you for that joe yep joe. yeah i didn't even know that was a possibility so yeah, that's, put it in the uh, news to me i put the link in the comments yeah yep, you see that thank you now these were 42 cent stamps so if i want to actually use them i'll have to put a couple of them on there, but you know, <laughs> I don't know what postage I buy forever stamps these days. I forget what postage actually is yeah. 50 something, maybe 55 cents. I, don't know. I think it's 55, 55. Okay. It's, it's funny though, because like stamps.com, they actually give you a discount. So mm. uh, I, I was concerned when I printed the stamps and and they said 51 cents. I was like, that's not enough. Why, why, why would it let me do that? <laughs> and then I remembered that you actually get a discount because you're paying like $18 a month just for the service. So uh, they give you a discount on the, the postage. 
I guess they have a special deal with the post office or something. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, that, uh, we'll, we'll have to check that out. Myartstamps.com. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I, I want to talk to Lee again. So <laughs> um, how many typewriters do you have in your collection? Um, <laughs> I honestly cannot remember, but it's something it, like 45, something like that. Yeah. Okay. The, the thing is, I've um, I've just been we're doing some work at the moment so that I can um, free up some space because there's a few that I'm I'm actually moving some out so that I can move some more in. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but I and I guess I just want to make sure that I'm keeping the ones that I know that I will use and that I enjoy. You know, the ones that I like. Exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been, it, it's funny because when I was, um, I was working this out the other day, but I was about seven years old when I got my first typewriter. Oh. And, uh, and it was actually one that was given to my mom, well, for me, but through my mom's work, because they were renewing their typewriters and updating, and then they gave me one of their old royals. I think nice. it was like a, a royal... FT or something like that it was a really big heavy thing that if you'd have seen me when I was about seven or eight trying to lift that it was <laughs> quite humorous wow and, uh, and I was sort of plunking it out you know I really absolutely loved it from the minute that I heard typewriters I knew that I was going to love it and it's such a it's such a lovely experience you know, it's just everything about it is sensory experience and Funnily enough, um, in 2019, I put on, I did something um, that was a, a little bit of a um, inspiration from America where someone had been doing uh, demand poetry. And I did a similar thing at a festival over here. And it's not really cottoned on to um, the British yet. They're not really into it the same way that uh, you are. And uh, I put on a, um, a stall in a festival where people could just come and choose a subject mm. to have a poem about, and then they could choose the price as well afterwards. So it was, it was actually uh, taken from someone else's, uh, you know, sort of theme, but it just really was just to get people to sort of enjoy poetry again, because I think they like it more than they realise. And, uh, and then I was doing that, I was actually doing this on the typewriter uh, and uh, it went down really well. Everybody really seemed to take it. They loved it. You know, it seemed to be interested and it mm. did really well. And of course, last year I couldn't do it again. But because of everything that's been going on, um, I actually started writing uh, stories for my grandchildren because okay. my grandchildren are being homeschooled. And they were getting really down because they were missing their friends. And I started writing stories about them, like adventure stories starring them um, and reading them to them because I used to read bedtime stories. And so I, I was missing seeing them and missing doing that. And so we were doing that instead over Zoom and, uh, and putting them in the story. So they felt like they'd gone on an adventure even without having actually been on one. So that's been really fun and I, I've really enjoyed just doing that. And of course, typing that out, I, I get a real buzz out of just using my typewriters. I love them very much. So, and it's so nice to be able to share it with other like-minded people. Um, Cause not everybody like, not everybody gets it. You know, some people are into high tech and I just really like the typewriters. Um, but yeah, I was thinking about some of what you guys were saying um, about mental health, because I am actually, um, I'm currently at doing outreach work and I help a lot of people that have got mental health issues, but that have also been going through a more um, difficult time because of what's been going on and therefore I've been helping them 
to get through some of those difficulties um, because they've not been handling it very well. And I've been there to sort of give my energy over to them and help them to feel better about what's going on and do a little bit of fun things, you know, like actually try to make the positive out of what's going on and trying to not look at the news as much and just actually just do nice fun things so some of the things that I've been doing is actually write, writing little things for them as well and reading it to them little funny stories and it's been really helpful they've really enjoyed it so yeah I, I've been really having fun with it just recently um but yeah I think at the last count it was 45 but like I say I'm about to get rid of a couple and uh get another one that is coming <laughs> Yeah. It's very addictive. It's very addictive. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> well, that's... Lee, I'll I'll remind you that the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe started out as stories that he wrote to his grandchildren. <laughs> so maybe you should think about making an anthology of those stories and see where it goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, what what Indeed, typewriter um, did you uh, take out like... into uh, doing the poetry? It was the Hermes 3000, uh -huh. uh, the, the green one. I've got, at the moment, I've got the, um, the Hermes rocket. Right. But um, it was, suddenly, I, yeah, I, I really, it just feels really nice. And um, a little girl went past me and she was speaking to her grandma and she's saying, what's that noise? And then she turned around and she saw me typing and she was so fascinated. That's what I ended up getting was lots of people who were really interested in the typewriters as well, not just the poetry, you know, so lots of conversations about that was really good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah it and the Hermes beautiful. is such a beautiful unit too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I, I've I've thought I would I would really enjoy doing. It's just I I haven't found my confidence as a poet. <laughs> uh, my my wife is a far better poet than I am, but I I think some of my stuff is pretty good. I I guess my concern. Oh, uh, William's showing a uh, Hermes three thousand. <laughs> um, I I think. Uh, I just need confidence in being able to, well, I, th I think what scares me is the concept of someone just giving you yeah. a topic and it's like, okay. <laughs> it's just like you're, you're starting to completely from scratch. And yeah. You just have to jump off. off. You yeah. Jump yeah. Off. <laughs> I, I actually, <laughs> coincidentally, Lee, I, I did a, a residency at a Barnes and Noble in Texas during the National Poetry Month. And I would sit at a stall with my Hermes, my baby, a rocket. And uh, if anybody wanted a poem, they would come up and ask me. And I said, okay, and I'd get a couple of questions. And then I would write them a poem and they would come back and pick it up. And I think I wrote 30 poems in one day. I was wow. just utterly drenched and exhausted. Yeah. And um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it, it just depending on the subject matter. Like I did everything from haiku to acrostics to sonnets to free verse, you know, and just you just gotta kind of just go with it, you know. Wow. And, and the same thing, I had children coming up to me, and and you know, I, I could have been horseshoeing, uh, you know, that's how weird they thought I looked. And I I invited many children, at, you know, this was a couple of years ago. I, I invited them to sit down, and I gave them a piece of paper and tap 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 and and all that stuff and. And they just thought it was the coolest thing ever, you know, because they could press a button and they could see it immediately on the piece of paper. But uh, yeah, it's it's great writing poetry in public. It's like, I, you know, I used to tell my students, it's it's like, you know, playing violin naked in the public square for the first time. <laughs> no getting <it. laughs> I, I yeah. think you could make it a little bit less intimidating if you were doing it for a charity. Well, and actually, then, I did. You know, I, I, I did it. I did it for an inter... Uh, uh, an inter-religious organization in the city I was working in, um, they could make donations. It wasn't anything I asked them. It was something they just simply, here's the, here's the basket. And so people were able to give monies for it. So yeah, there's that little bit of barrier you could include.
food that helps things, uh, you know, gives you a little bit more uh, coverage, as you, as you can say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Anthony, I, I um, wanted to make a comment. I, I think it was just um, either yesterday or, or Friday, your uh, one typed page entry um, <laughs> had to do with your, your office space. I just and, had and, to tell and, people. <laughs> uh, well, it, it's funny. I I, uh, I I almost responded. Um, m my office space that I have here is, if I'm lucky, it might be half the size of yours, maybe a little yeah. less. Yet I've managed to um, uh, achieve over twice the amount of disarray in my small <laughs> space. So I felt like an overachiever in that moment. I was uh, very happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's um, just it's, look at Joe it's, there. <laughs> it's, it's like we tend to whatever space we're given, we tend to fill it. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, the 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 other thing that stood out was um, now I see Mike um, uh, from Washington has already left, but he actually responded uh, with with a few really helpful links, um, just about um, helping uh, people to possibly uh, change up or improve their writing processes and uh oh. and i went out and i was looking at that so i've bookmarked yet another site um which i i think um that might be something uh interesting uh for exchange or exploration gregory in terms of uh, you know we've been talking a lot about uh, writing of course here we are with typewriters and uh so um if folks have uh, resources um, along those lines that are talking about maybe how to help um, free up, improve, whatever, when it comes to your writing, um, I'd be interested in, in learning learning more. Yeah, and it, it, you know, uh, I meant to say this before, uh, if anybody wants to email me, I, I have a PhD in English and my, create, my, my specialty is actually creative writing. I'm a full-time writer oh and I've taught, graduate I've, I've taught graduate level creative writing for uh, probably 12 years. Wow. So if anybody ever wants to, um, I, you know, prose, poetry, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I can always guide and help. That's great. Anybody wants to send, uh, so feel free to, you know, don't send me your manuscripts. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you can eventually, but, but you know, if you, uh, uh, please use me as a resource. I, I'm good for very little else. In my, <laughs> uh, I, I'm good for, uh, I can write like nobody's business, but I, I can't do anything else. So, um, and I'm a pretty good teacher. So if anybody needs any help with that, I really, I honestly don't, uh, don't feel uh, at all. Uh, you know, I, my PhD was totally by accident. So I'm not an, I'm not really an academic. I'm a, I'm a writer. I just happened to get a PhD. Um, they kind of just, you know how things just kind of present themselves and okay I, I <laughs> they, they paid PhD. for it they paid for it so yeah yeah I, okay. I wish a, a phd would just fall in my lap <laughs> oh, I don't, try getting try getting a job with a phd in english oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's absolutely horrible yeah i i'm 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 over terribly over qualified or you know it's it's just it's is that where you manage a Starbucks? Is that what you do with a? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm actually a end of life doula. I, I do that. Oh, I'm a writer, okay. and I tutor uh, online. Um, I tutor online now, so I, all my stuff's online, and uh, I, I do the, the end of life doula stuff uh, part time. So I, just I have keep a, getting book, books coming out. And, I have a friend who got a, a, I think a bachelor's in some kind of English degree at University of Arizona, but his, his favorite method of writing during his course was to sit in the bathtub with a glass of wine <laughs> and yeah. write. But well, the only surprised, th you know. Yeah, the only thing he's done with his degree is he, he works, one of his jobs is he grades papers online for some company yeah. that's contracted by school systems or whatever, so. Yeah, yeah. It, and, and all it is for him is a, is a series of depressing comments about how poor the educational s system is because these kids can't write. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It's, it's a very bizarre, you know, they, yeah, the humanities in general are pretty bizarre right now. <laughs> yeah. But I just wanted to throw that 
I didn't want to monopolize the conversation, but if I anybody, love it all. Thank Bill you. or anybody or Gregory, or, you know, uh, feel free, um, you know, look me up. I guess it's a good time to mention also about creative writing that we're just a couple days away from the deadline for the for the next installment of Richard Polt's uh, book project. Uh, this what is yeah. the uh, what is the one called Deadlines? Right, it's called Deadlines. So uh, yeah. yeah, so I don't know if you, any of you guys Dead are involved keys, in that. Key. Oh, Dead Keys. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Key, I, yeah. I didn't participate because I didn't have any ideas for macabre or scary stories, but I look forward to seeing yeah. what everybody puts up, puts out. Sadly, I can't do fan fiction for, for the, uh, that, for Richard Polt's thing. So um, I really can't get into it. So yeah. um, as much as I would like to participate, my, my brain just seems to go along the, those lines and so oh. i i am not able to participate <laughs> well yeah, there's a whole world of, of fan fiction out there so yeah. <laughs> yeah well i have to take off pretty quick but i saw at the end of last week's william you did a uh, el dorado you had an elder mm -hmm. little el dorado yeah. and yes, um a friend of mine gave me her um, father's old uh, and it's got the nameplate El Dorado but it's plastic and made in um, Japan probably 80s 70s 80s or something okay. does that have anything yeah. to do with the old El Dorado that I have no idea uh, you'd have to ask someone who actually knows about the history of typewriters I believe there's a fellow by the name of Ted Monk and Joe Van Cleef who seem to know stuff about that um, the one I have is made <laughs> in holland um yeah was that a uh, royal was that a royal uh lamp? Yes. yeah yes. well you know yeah. i have the royal mercury which is made by silver seiko in japan but mm -hmm. if you go back into the typewriter database you find out that royal had a mercury typewriter back in i think the 30s or 40s so they kind of tend yes, to reuse did. those names just like like ford is reviving some old car names now the, you know, they're mm -hmm. thinking about coming up with, a, you know, whatever it is. I don't know. I saw an article. So a lot of these brands tend to rehash their old brand names, or in this yeah. case of typewriters, they get them made by in the, in the seventies, it would have been probably a Japanese manufacturer like brother or somebody like that. Okay. It doesn't say Royal on it at all, but since it says Eldorado, I kind of assumed it was, but I can't imagine. I mean, it's a miserable thing to type on. I mean, it's just plastic and <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, for what Maybe it's worth, stuff. I went to El Dorado High School. I don't, I don't know what I used to is. live on El Dorado Road. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you imagine that I think there was imagine there. that there might be a uh, a collector who wants every El Dorado that was ever made and yeah. Sure. yeah there you go <laughs> i don't know um it doesn't seem very desirable to me but uh, cadillac el dorado <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. I, I got a bit of a stumper for everyone uh i have a my very first typewriter i ever got was from my parents i got it in 1980 i think it's a 1971 olympia sm9 now um where mm -hmm. is the serial number on those this is a trick take question you take the machine uh, no it's okay i'll, turn it I'll up. show you yeah yeah <laughs> underneath the bottom it's back. i'm coming back underneath the bottom line i think there's yeah, more to this it's going to be then. close yeah it's not there uh -huh. does someone have an sm9 there it has no it has no serial number we'll i can't the, find it Oops, sorry. I couldn't Anthony, see. Anthony, I hate to break it to you, but your parents are part of a typewriter theft ring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonder where they got it from. Well, they're Scottish and Irish, so who knows, right? They, they, they've <laughs> scrubbed the uh, the serial number so that it can't be traced back to you. Yeah. It's thoughtful of them. And I was expecting it to be on one of these things right here. You see yes. that? Yeah. yeah, that's what it normally not, is. Yeah, it's not there. That's why. Yeah, it's is it, plainly is it, not there. Is it possible that that one just missed getting serial number stamped? Or no, what I'm thinking sure. is maybe they replaced it, that part. I don't know. 
So that's the model where the whole top cover comes off, right? It hinges yeah. back. Yeah. Okay. I used to have one of those. I think the serial number is inside the t somewhere from the top. I th I'm not sure where, but I, th I, I just something in the back of my mind. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm looking now. I just, I got to get a light here. Or um, look around the carriage area, maybe on the carriage rails or something like that. Really bizarre. Cause I, I want to, I'm trying to go through all my typewriters now and, and actually date them. Uh, but yeah, I looked everywhere. I it's wonder if really Ted knows. Bizarre. Ted, are you out there? Are you out there, Ted? <laughs> Is that an SM7? Uh, SM9. SM9? Uh, it should be on the bottom. Yeah, yeah this we've, one. We've, we've already <laughs> gone through that. Yeah, it's we, not. It's you not. Gone and I it. thought maybe. Oh, hold on. Let, Let me go grab one and see. Here. I thought maybe it was, you know. I'm maybe it's like a late keys. model SM8. Maybe it was like, maybe they're oh. using parts of an SM8 and maybe it was different place on the SM8. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Um, it's a solid. Take a look at the back edge of the machine. If it, okay. Uh, okay, that is an SM8. Nothing not like it's not a nine? It has the individual tab stops on, on the tab rail along the back of the carriage. Do you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm showing okay. you. Yeah. Kind of. Is that what those are? Yeah, those are individual tab stops? Started, started, so I guess the SM9 eight. had a key set tabulator and the SM8 has, has just the tab That's stops. Uh, oh, but I wonder, I, where's, the, yes. where's the serial number for the eight? Have you checked underneath on the bottom? So let's yes, see if we he get has. a camera in here, yeah? Yeah, several right. times. I just can't see it anywhere. Okay, so his, it's at the, it's at the back. Who's, uh, who's talking? I, I gotta see what you're doing. At, at the, towards the back on the bottom? There's Curry, a, are, where are you? It sticks out. On the foot yeah, it, it, I, I don't have it on mine, Curry. And there's no stamp on that part. Yeah, I don't have a stamp on mine, Curry. Do you have the, the spaces there, but there's no stamp? Hey, correct. Uh, yeah, that's hilarious. That correct. Yeah, it's right. Like, I don't know if you can see it. Which side is it on? It's right there. So where my finger is right here, that's it right yeah. there. And there's yeah. no stamp. Isn't that weird? Oh, oh they maybe updated the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty than mine. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering if they... Yeah, I was even seeing it was worn or something, but it's not. Did they replace it or repaint it? Curry, is yours an SM8? I believe it's an 8, yes. Mine came from West Germany. I don't know if that matters. Everybody. I've got a, I've got a, oh, it, it, all of <laughs> them came from. Yeah, it's a Canadian one. It's got a little, it's got half of a sticker. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a mystery. So, so does the chassis look like it was repainted black? Because most of them are kind of the silvery metal color. Yeah, yeah they're, it's that kind of... Okay, it? kind of an anodized yeah. or whatever finish. Yeah, anodized, yeah, yeah. You don't think the anodization might have covered it up or something? Like, Maybe. No, no. No, no probably not. No. And they would have That's probably bizarre. stamped it in afterwards if they had anodized it first. So, yeah. Hmm. That's a mystery. What if it's a knockoff? They got it on Canal Street. I'm just kidding. Hey, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> knockoff. That's a great, yeah. seriously, anybody who's ever talked about SM9s or 8s, these are seriously dependable, good workhorses. Like I, I've had this for, since I was probably 18 years old. So it's older than dirt to me. <laughs> That's the machine and, that uh, Google uses. Yeah, and it's uh, it, it always, you know, just plug it away. No issues whatsoever with this thing. Love it. You know, it's not pretty to look at. It's, yeah. it's a little tad on the boring side. Uh, uh, I'm the only one that likes the design of the SM9, I think. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, oh, I love it. That's not true. So very, oh, like almost it. like Bauhaus. You know, it's very... So, so Anthony, I, I was wondering that maybe this the bracket is mounted upside down when they installed oh. it, maybe the serial number is on the ins like with an inspection mirror. Maybe it's on the on the other side of it of that bracket. I if I can even feel it. That's a thought. I'll tr I'll try with a mirror. I've got one of those. Little yeah. Do wikis. 
Here's what I that's, think. That's the technical name. I do hickey. I think <laughs> hickey. Anthony, I, I think you have a prototype. Oh. I think it doesn't have a serial number. It's a prototype. This was the first. <laughs> so you could mother... sell it for thousand dollars, two thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> I think my mother did have an affair with Indiana Jones. So. Pretty, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and that has something to do with this <laughs> i just throw it out there it's in the side. <laughs> see um, olympia sm uh series typewriters just inspire creativity that's been my line you know oh, just, that's, yeah. yeah so yeah. indiana jones sure why not just <laughs> that's what that's what does it that's really interesting <laughs> anthony that's that's uh, uh, yeah. fascinating uh, it's just kind of bizarre because i was trying to do you know my due diligence here but um uh, can he do it? <laughs> I don't know. So I'm thinking it's a 19. It, do, do, do we think it's an eight? An SM8. Yeah, yes, SM8. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Well, I'll have to go back and look at the SM8s and see if I can visually um, see what kind. It's probably 1970 then or 68 or something like that. But I'll check. There, there's going to be a serial number on there somewhere. Yeah, I know. There, yeah. there, there just, has to uh, be. <laughs> from what I understand, the, the SM8 and SM9s were made side by side. Yes. Oh. oh, is that right? Okay. Yes. All just right. remember, we were talking about the Germans here. Uh, uh, from what I understand, very, SM8 and SM9. Yes. Oh. Very precise then. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh. It, it, it just boggles my mind that there's not a consistent place that they, I mean, all typewriters have the same basic frame. Yeah, there's, you would think. Just a universal place that they put the, the serial number. Yeah. That's part of the fun and the frustration, though, is uh, searching out a serial number on a model you've never had before and going, why the did they put it there? <laughs> put it there, yeah. 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 <laughs> I know, huh? It, it's yeah. but Man, I've I've pulled some muscles looking for some serial numbers, like just, you know, having it up in the air and pushing it around. And uh, oh, look at Miles Davis there. <laughs> Miles Monk. Miles <laughs> Monk, exactly. <laughs> Playing with his back to us. Well, for, for those of you who want to find serial numbers, it's like, you know, here's, oh, here's yeah. the serial number on this one. It's like in the, the, oh, the middle yeah. here. Uh. Yeah. So yeah. behind the behind the type bars and, and it's like yeah there it is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You have to do a little peeky boo. <laughs> I like it when it's on the and you know it's easier to see from the bottom, I noticed, because I could look through I could look straight through because because there it is on the on the ring back there and I can look straight through to it. Obviously it's not going to show yeah. up too well on an iPad, but I can look through. Like, oh, yeah, there it is right there. Yeah. It's buried. <laughs> yeah. So how's that machine working, Diane, now that you're cleaning it a little bit? Uh, it's working very well, except I, I saw that there's a, uh, a broken part for the um, – it's for the uh, carriage release, but – it's a part that I cannot fix. It's it's actually on the how do I describe it? <laughs> it's on the um, the piece that's fitted to the escapement. So that ain't gonna happen. It's everything else works. So um, I'm not worrying about that part on this machine. Uh, whenever I had the I had a part similar to that on, fixed on my six it was this little hook here because that there's a, a little bar that goes in here that the bottom of that hook picks up and that's what allows the the mechanism to be freed so that you can do you can move the carriage freely um using this mechanism but that that particular bar i was looking down in there that particular bar is missing on this machine huh. so very cool It needs a ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> and where do you get those wide ribbons from? 
Well, actually, Baco um, has supplied me with some. I think I actually bought some from some like I bought some from a company online just for the heck of it. They put out ribbons for the time clocks because oh. they're pretty wide as well, and they would they would probably work. Um, I haven't installed either of those yet. Mm. Um, simply because the ribbons tend to dry out on these things if you don't use them and, and they dry out pretty quick. Well, relatively speaking, you know, compared to what I would find on a, on a more modern typewriter. Hmm. I see. Indro, how are you? <laughs> uh, Indro, what are you making for debt? What are you making for uh, excuse dinner? Excuse me. What are you making uh, for dinner? Hamburgers. Hamburgers. Uh, oh, uh, oh <laughs> sounds good. Hamburgers and fries. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Make uh, extra. We'll be over. <laughs> five minutes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Put on no. a garden burger for me, man. <laughs> oh, let's take a look at this. What is it? Oh. Oh. That oh, is a Hermes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I took it uh, completely apart. Is it a three thousand or two thousand? Two. I like two thousand. That's a good machine. Oh. So, I think they're yeah. just as good as the three. It is. Yeah, I think so. So um, I was working on this one today. Finally, I found some time to do some work. <laughs> so. Um, but it, I don't have enough light. I'm in, I'm in the living room right now. So, uh, and this is my normal uh, day desk. So I don't have much light here. So I'm gonna, I have to start cooking anyway. So, yeah. yeah. And you've got a vicious, vicious dog guarding your door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a killer. <laughs> Just like mine. Well, come for That's bacon, right. but not true. for criminals. <laughs> <laughs> no, beware of the owner. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Very good. All right, man. I do have something to share. Yeah. Uh, so I've heard of the cult of Hermes, of course, and Indro is a, <laughs> is a member. I, I have not been initiated, but I've been initiated in the, I don't know if there's a cult or, or something, but I got oh, my yeah. first thermal. thermal. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very fun, man. Excellent. They're great for coffee shops. I've been in. It freaks people well, out because because you, you go and they, of, not this time of the. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, here we can. We can, <laughs> some places you can, but yeah, not not a lot. Yeah, not not in Portugal. We're, we're still on complete lockdown. So, so yeah, when what I, do you think, I've Bernardo, been, about that? I, I've been enjoying them quite a lot. <laughs> just ripple yeah, first of pages day I, first, first day i got it i wrote nine pages straight. oh wow, oh, so. wow. <laughs> and just earlier earlier today i was doing some some thermal labels for oh yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah those are cool i never thought of that one of us yeah one of us yes. which model yes. do you one have us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what model do you have sorry so this is a Canon S50, which is the equivalent oh, of yeah. the Type Star Five, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I like the look of it. Yeah. it I've was, got a couple of brothers EP twenties, I think. Mm -hmm. Ah, there's a nice. It was. Uh, I was curious. Uh, ever since Joe and Gregory and Ted have been talking about them, and. Uh, since we're on lockdown and uh, I share workspace with my girlfriend, uh, using a, a manual typewriter while she's on a Zoom call, or, or it's kind of complicated. So I thought, well, it's good as time as any to get a thermal for the for the quiet typing, mm -hmm. and I've been loving it. So, all right, yep, yeah. Join so the call. Uh, I have. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. I know this one doesn't have all the all the nice features, but uh, it was available locally, and I paid fifteen euros. So I uh, right. came with the it came yeah. with the AC adapter. But I wanted to ask you uh, if you recommend batteries, which kind, alkaline or or rechargeable? 
Uh, I have found alkaline running, ice. Yeah, yeah alkalines will li- will last a year in that thing. Uh, Lear, yeah, they're they're great. Yeah, oh, really? Just pop men in you, forget it. Yeah, the the only caveat right. is to not plug it into the AC adapter when you have the alkaline batteries in, because yeah. um, it'll right. it'll try to recharge the alkalines and they're not intended to be recharged, so it might damage the unit. So just remember that. Okay, fun um, fireworks. All right. So I was going to ask you, Bernardo, uh, do you do you find yeah. yourself using the LCD screen a lot when you're typing? Are you in the the correction mode where you can correct in the LCD? Yes, as you're, I, I, yeah. I, I usually use the correction mode, uh, especially because the sometimes the end key misses, and I ask, wanted to ask you about that. What can I do to to to? I don't know if I can clean it or. The only thing I've misses, done. Yeah, the only thing I've done is is on some of my thermals, I've actually taken them apart. And it's a real delicate operation taking, once you have the machine apart, there's a these delicate ribbon cables you have to disconnect from the circuit board to get the, the keyboard out. And there's a bunch of tiny screws on the back of the keyboard and you, you can take the keyboard apart and there's a membrane that goes over the actual circuit board and you clean up the little contacts with some contact cleaner or alcohol or both. But it's a kind of a delicate operation and... Um, so my best advice is just to use it. Sometimes just using it more, maybe uh, you can rejuvenate. Maybe you can put enough pressure on the contact to, to break through the oxidation, get a better contact. Very well. Is, is your, your time and everything is good. Okay. Uh, um. <laughs> um, but one thing I wanted to ask you, Joao, is because uh, Previously, when we when we had talked about the thermal typewriters, you were you were concerned that the yes the foreign characters were on the second shift. Is exactly. that well? I uh, it's well. For, for first, I don't understand why the the period is on uh, is a shifted character on my keyboard. It's a little weird. Interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> totally weird. So if, so if uh, if I if I'm on the second keyboard and I need to finish a sentence, I need to switch to the first keyboard to to, to do a period. <laughs> That's uh, a little inconvenient. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I'm writing more and more, I get used to, and the, you know, on, on these the the to change the keyboard, I have to reach uh, on the upper left corner of the of the keyboard, and it's so. Well, it's, it feels like a dance, really, and I, I feel like my, my my hands are all over the place, so I can switch between the different accents. And, but you know, it's what I it's what was available, and I've been enjoying it anyway. Well, that's, that's good. good. That's an important thing. <laughs> yeah. I so, believe what kind of paper are, really... are you? What kind of paper are you using? Sorry, I interrupted you. Mm, I'm, are you using rolls of fax I'm, paper? Use of paper. Yep. I, I had an old an old roll of, of fax paper that I've been using. It's more than twenty years old, I believe. Uh, I, I had it for a long time. I don't know where it came from. Um, <laughs> when I watched one of your videos, Joe, I I did the the nail test on the roll, and that's when I learned it was thermal. Uh, <laughs> waiting for the I was waiting for the for the um, the thermal. For having a thermal typewriter to actually use it, and I've been very happy with the. Can you can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Sorry, my, my AirPods are. Going we can, we can hear you. Place. Uh, I've been having a lot of uh, success with the with the thermal labels. I think the print quality is very good. Uh, sorry, my my girlfriend's having a. A Zoom Party? session of Dungeons and Dragons at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, Excellent. <laughs> if, you, if you catch some Portuguese Dungeons and Dragons in the background, that's <laughs> very good. That shit sounds beautiful, though. It's in Portuguese. I know. Uh... <laughs> Zoom dragons. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I. She's on the Zoom dungeons. These, these kinds of. These oh, yeah. kinds of labels and. Uh, I'll probably start making some some of those postcards because these are being labels. It's it, 
gets easier to to post them on on some postcards, and I'll, I'll probably be sending you some soon, cool. showing you. Uh, I'd like to share some of our uh, my local views. I have this one ready to oh, yeah. send off. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I need to get more. And you know, most most shops are closed up right now. So oh, um, I'm I, I was thinking about sending some with the local views and some with drawings as a, as the I, as I sent Gregory and he showed in the beginning of the. Of the session, so yeah, thermal typewriters. And I uh, did not expect to like them that much. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does, but we all do. They're, they're like magic. It's 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 just amazing, especially when you don't have the the ribbon in there. In there, it's it's yep. it's like magic. It's mind-boggling. Yeah, it's like magic. Yeah, it, like with a manual typewriter, you can see how it's how it's making the letters. But you can you can look at a thermal typewriter all day, not not figure out how it's making the letters or at yeah. least i can't anyway <laughs> maybe ted can but <laughs> oh yeah i've always thought if i run across a type star four um, that would be yes. something i might go for based on the feedback that you all have um provided over the course of conversations or your uh, blogs videos whatever um so I, ha best. I have an interest in that machine yeah, I, I I would recommend that one. I, I actually like the five also. Um, I've used some of the later ones too, like the 110 and I think the 220. And at that point, it, it's, it's getting all these crazy features uh, that, I don't know, it's, it's well beyond a typewriter at that point. <laughs> I mean, you can make characters like this big, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that's a typewriter anymore. And it, seeing a thermal typewriter do that, by the way, is very interesting Weird. because it, it, you know, it takes like, I don't know, six passes or something to yeah. get big letters like that. And it's, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> well, the feature um, of the four that stands out to me, if I understand things right, is that it um, has the ability to create the justified type yeah justified and, type. And, yes. and that so that to me is is um kind of a standout mm -hmm. item you know that that's yeah. the appeal yeah it's real nice on blog posts <laughs> yep oh yeah 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 that yeah I, I, i'm gonna advocate look, look really cool. yeah. but i'm going to advocate against thermal typewriters um i don't think they have any use i think they're a gateway uh device <laughs> to 286 or a 386 right getting windows 3.1 yeah. uh, that's the definition <laughs> um i think everybody just speak to old type bars and if people in the coffee shop don't like it tough titty, tough titty. <laughs> <laughs> just go. Uh, see I, I love it sean now the kid in me is coming on i'm told not to i'm gonna go searching these out now it's <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah go apology gateway what <laughs> I'm so there. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, had me at gate. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Oh my god, so true. Yeah, I, I've, has, I've has anybody actually in the past when you went when you took your machine to a coffee shop? Did it? I've never had a bad experience. Like no one's ever come up and said, "Would you stop doing that, you big poser?" I've been too <laughs> afraid to do it. They always come What's up what? and uh, want to talk to you. <laughs> Yeah, they just want to talk to you, and people are generally really interested. Um, I've never had a bad experience. I uh, I cannot say the same. Um, I oh, was sorry to hear. And I was, I, and the thing is, I was outside at a sports bar that I used to frequent at lunch, and it was one of those. I think it actually was typewriter day that that particular day. It's been a couple of years ago now, um, and. I was typing. I was outside figuring, okay, I'm out here. I'm not going to bug anybody yeah. indoors. Well, it turns out there was somebody at, like, I don't know, 10 or 15 feet away at a different table outside. They were reading a book and they kept looking at me. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I got so stare. uncomfortable. It was just like, yeah. just not good. Oh, they didn't actually hear. say anything to me. It, it went, right. you know. Yeah. 
those book readers just can't <laughs> trust. Well, I, I've never had an issue. I, I don't know. I pull up on my motorcycle and sit there with my riding vest on with a typewriter in front of me, and nobody, everyone leaves me alone. So I don't know. I wonder why that is. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the cu- skull and crossbones on your back. That's right. <laughs> no, I'm just I'll probably let you turn them off. That's funny. I, I wouldn't mind sharing. You guys yeah, go for it. it. Yeah, Go for absolutely. It. Oh, I've got a good buddy that I've been repairing top right Who's Sharon? In Los Angeles. <laughs> turned me on to a store <laughs> called Daiso. And it's a Japanese store. It's kind of like a Japanese 99 cent store. And they've got them all over LA. Yep. But I, I had no, oh, my hair looks terrible. Now that you spotlight <laughs> it, I need to fix this. This looks terrible. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> So Wear a hat. I was going to mention that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Fix your hair already. <laughs> so he tells me, uh, he tells me, hey, we're going to Dasso for some consumables. And I thought, well, I don't know what that means, but okay. So we walk a few blocks through <laughs> LA and nobody walks in LA, but I do. And I get, he says, look at these Q-tips I got. So he, these are baby Q-tips. They say baby on them. <laughs> so they must be babies. They're, yeah. they're tiny. They're, they're tiny. They're like a quarter of the size, and maybe some of y'all have already. I don't know how After a few years, they grow bigger. But <laughs> I got boots on my face. Anyways, they're tiny. It gets it gets better. I'm not gonna put that one back in there. It gets better. They've got monster Q-tips. Oh. Trying to get the light right. These things are freaking huge, right? Compared to the babies, and then oh, they yeah. have pointed Q-tips. But they're all Things? for makeup stuff. So if you have oh. a chance to visit a makeup store, no, those are great. Nope. I naturally, use those naturally via Joe. You know, I use a heck out of these uh, disposable yeah. mascara things for uh, yeah. and all sorts of funny things. But oh my gosh, my world just opened up on what I can reach <laughs> out of a typewriter because of these different size cotton swabs. I had been buying different brands because they were a little bit different size. But needless to say, it's very it's very exciting to know that. Uh, that those things are out there. This store is called Daiso. It's like a 99 cent um, Japanese store. I suspect if you went into a makeup store, they would have smaller, uh, mm-hmm. you know, smaller Q-tips as well. So that's been really exciting. Um, anyways, just some 411. I would like to uh, make some announcements. I was chatting with uh, my buddy Dave with Austin Typewriter Inc. Uh, a few minutes ago, and he was telling me that apparently the monk podcast yeah. just came out so yeah oh, it just cool. came up this morning got i saw it last night I've i'm famous yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're famous I, Ted. I, I think ted's gone no i'm right here oh it says oh i should see you then i'm oh, sorry <laughs> the fame has already gone to his head i know <laughs> i can imagine it <laughs> <show. I don't. laughs> I, I did I notice that uh you, you gave the the wrong times for the uh the uh, the Eastern, it, it, uh, it actually starts at 11 a.m. here. I have no, I have no uh, concept of time. <laughs> he says with a clock ring above him. <laughs> I have to have that because I don't know what time it is otherwise. Well, you're on Arizona time anyways. So that is yeah. <laughs> that's know, very special there. <laughs> I just he looks like an, something. He looks like an AM DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Wolfman. <laughs> I just finished making uh, Olympia SM7 feet, uh, and I just realized they're the same as the early SM9 feet. Ooh. I'm going to have to put those on there and see if they work. Nice. Bad boys. I think they will. (laughs) So that's my sudden realization for today. (laughs) <laughs> I have a, an additional question for the group. I know the chances are slim to none, but is there anybody out there that has a um, extra Olympia SM3 case? Forget it. Fair <laughs> extra? No. I, next. I have, I have oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next. Bay or, from, or from Facebook uh, Marketplace, one of the two recently, um, because I had, I had a, a script machine that came with nothing. It was in a box. It was one of those pickups. And oh gosh. Um, so, yeah, I, I just kind of looked around till I found one. And but how, it, how long did you search? I don't know. It wasn't too, it wasn't too much longer after I got it. 
Well, that's encouraging. But Bill, I probably the best way to get a case to buy a crappy Olympia and throw the typewriter away, keep the case. Exactly. Good. Uh, and then say. <laughs> joking aside, if you get a crappy enough, you probably sell parts to all the rest of us folks, anybody that needs them, uh, recoup, recoup a bit of stuff there. The problem is I part for parts unless they're like been run over. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I'll try to save them even if it takes months of blood, years. Um, it's easy to say, hard to do, I guess. Yeah. Now, no worries. I, I just um, uh, thought I would ask. I, I placed a hold on a um, SM3 with my local typewriter shop, and he doesn't have a case for it um, at this point but he probably has as good a chance of anyone of, of locating in case eventually. But I just thought I'd ask since I had all of you as yeah. resources available here on this call. So yeah, definitely. I've had really good luck on that Facebook page for typewriter parts. Sometimes it takes a month or two, but eventually someone will respond. So anyways, just, yeah, just give it time and give yourself a month or two and usually someone will. And Nine times out of ten, they don't charge me for the part. Bye, Anthony. I'll try to find a way. But... <laughs> oh, bye, Anthony. Cool. Bro. Oh, and it looks like my internet connection is getting pretty shaky. Oh, a quick hi to my Travis, and then bye to everyone else, and we'll touch base you next week. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, William. Good day, William. Yeah. Thanks for the great typing, bye, William. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. indeed. May, how are you? Hey, good morning. <laughs> Excellent. I've got a new typewriter. Oh, oh. Sorry. I guess you are. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, it is not my typewriter. I, I had this commission oh. from oh. Uh, Unplugged Typewriter Company, Megan Ciada. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her last name right, but she does custom work in addition to you know refurbishing typewriters and this was originally a black a little scruffy black model o uh, 1936 royal model o and she painted it this beautiful champagne gold color i wow. love it it's beautiful it's amazing uh, and everything works flawlessly perfectly Very classy cleaned uh. painted and it's automotive paint so it's really high quality she even did some decals, <clears throat> a paper out so you can see some of the decal work that she put the little lie low and high. And uh, let's see if I can mm. this in the camera. Oh, nice. there. Yeah, it's very nice. So I don't get to keep it though. My sister specifically wanted a champagne gold old typewriter. And of course, back in those days, they didn't really come in anything but black. <laughs> so. Welcome to the modern world, Mr. <laughs> Royal O. Uh -huh. And that had the cork platen on it? Um, she says it's cork, and I'm not really sure. I've never seen a cork platen, but it really feels like rubber to me. It, it feels like, hmm. I guess I think of cork as like, you know, what goes in a wine bottle. Oops, my earbud fell out. What goes in a wine bottle, you know, kind of bubbly and rough. But this thing is really smooth, like rubber. So. Hmm. I'm wondering if it's like an alternative platen, you know, maybe a softer one for specific applications. I'm not sure, but I don't know enough about the platens to, to say if it's cork or rubber, but it's, it feels like rubber uh, and it's brown. It's a dark mm -hmm. brown instead of a black, but it doesn't look like cork to me unless this is special kind of process cork, you know, where it's, it's, it's pretty dense cork that they use on yeah. platen so okay so uh, do, uh, do they cover it in anything like the platen yeah I, i'm wondering if they if they would coat the the cork in anything probably i'm sure it, it has to be you know, uh, altered you know because obviously you wouldn't be able to type on a uh, wine cork <laughs> <laughs> yeah, type cork yeah. But it's very dense. It's much like rubber. So I don't mm -hmm. know enough about it. Ted, you know, he's our expert. Ted, <laughs> and they can. Tell well, I've never actually stuff. seen a cork platen, but uh, I know they exist, and I've seen them in parts uh, manuals. So uh, hmm. I'm, I'm just assuming that that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, but, uh, whatever it is, it works great. It's still soft, and, mm -hmm. and it goes well with the champagne gold color. 
Indeed. That it's been painted. So it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> it's very pretty. It's beautiful. But I get to visit it. So, you know, my sister and I, we only live about 10 miles away. So I'll still get to see it. Maybe play on it sometime. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I have a... a it may have been table platform. I I couldn't hear the question. I, I think you asked if it was a turbo platform, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know enough about typewriters mm -hmm. to to say. I just know it's a beautiful typewriter and it types well. <laughs> yeah. That's all I know. <laughs> it's so opaque far, on the outside, right? It's not. Say that like, again? It's not transparent to the core. No, uh, no, it's, 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 it's opaque. Yeah. It's so it's opaque. not a turbo platen. It's opaque, yeah. but, and it has the feel intact of rubber, you know, mm -hmm. it's definitely solid. It's, it's not, uh, it doesn't look like cork, but like I said, I don't know enough about it. Yeah. I think a turbo platen would be transparent on the outside so you could see the core and that he picks yeah. the core oh, to uh, make the color. Uh, I think I've seen a, Cork platen typewriter. My friend Kevin has one. I think I don't know. It's it's one of the British made typewriters. But anyway, it definitely looks like cork. If it was mm. cork, mm. yeah. So that looks like either they put a, maybe a heat shrink sleeve on it, or it was an old Ames replacement platen for a cork, mm -hmm. or something like that. Right? Mm -hmm. It was it, replaced. It could also be like, have you, have you ever seen the gold Galaxy 2s that have the gold platens in them or like mm. yellowish platens? Uh, they did make colored rubber, so it could have possibly been a special recovering job mm -hmm. where yeah. they used a, a special like a mm -hmm. gold or, or yellowish uh, or brown uh, rubber to recover it. Mm -hmm. I have a so. green one like that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, all the Galaxy 2s came in with platens that matched the paint color. I know, they're mm. so cute. They don't all that have that now because uh, a lot of times the platens got replaced and when they did replace mm -hmm. them, they used black, so. It seems uh, like it. I've only seen them on the smaller, the 10 inch carriage. Yeah, that's the only ones that came on. Okay, yes, because I have the 12 inch and it is black. Mm -hmm. Galaxy and the Classic 12, I don't know if the Classic Paint, no, it, it would only be the, the Galaxy 2s, which are the 10 inch uh, right. galaxies that have like the little brown logo in the front that says Galaxy and mm -hmm. has like two in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, those are pretty cool machines. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, so, May, how does the gold typewriter type? Perfectly. Absolutely <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> She wouldn't flawless. give her sister a bad machine. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to give my sister. Exactly. Especially a first typewriter yeah, has to you, be a good typewriter. Got to give yeah. it a good experience. You don't want to give someone a bad typewriter for their first typewriter. Yeah. No, we are memory keepers for your first typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> don't be mean. Right, so give the good stuff. Exactly. <laughs> So I'm going to show I'm going to show the screen real quick because I, I can I can do this now. Um, oh. <laughs> we have the uh, uh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's partially obscured on mine, but uh, we have some some comments here from from YouTube. Um, we have uh, Andy Kovacs. Mm -hmm. He says, "So here's a question for you all: What's the forecast for 2021 type-ins?" I am, I am in the U.S., California, but was just wondering how the rest of the nation and world was doing on that topic. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I, I would say people are going to be wary of doing that sort of thing for quite some time yet. Um, uh, I know we are here. I have I've seen some people in uh, like more toward the center of the country have been throwing type ins. Uh, one or two okay <clears throat> so i mean it's happening but it's yeah. I, it's kind of an iffy proposition i think yeah don't yeah. they know zoom is where it's at <laughs> yeah well i mean that's, that's <laughs> kind of what I, virtual what, type in <laughs> yeah it's it's a good solution and then uh, we have john uh, uh capazzo i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly um he says that he loves the royal uh maze royal oh, thank there. you um thank you he also said there's rubberized cork. 
Yeah. I could see that. So, uh, so the base of it is cork and then it's got rubber impregnated yeah, that, into it. That could be. Yeah. There we go. Um, I'm so getting used to my programming here. <laughs> I'm not used to having the power of screen during. Yeah. He's got the power. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, oh, he, yeah, he was saying it's, it's uh, he understands it's um, rubberized cork. Mm -hmm. uh, they were produced back when rubber was in limited availability. That makes sense. You know, it's 1936. It's a lot of limited technology back then. Yeah. And as you see, Andy says, uh, big sad face. Big sad face for the <laughs> type in. I want to organize one in Arkansas. Yeah. So I, yeah there's, I've never before. been to a type in, and I don't know of anybody that would organize one in my state. So I'm just going to. Yeah, it's after, up to you. That's what I had to calms do. Down. Yeah, I'm going to try to organize one because I live in the metro area in Little Rock and mm -hmm. we have lots of big libraries and places. Where yeah, talk to your library. Post. They'll help yeah. you out with that. Oh, yeah. I have lots of friends that work mm -hmm. in libraries, so I'm sure <laughs> I can get something going. But I want to wait until COVID calms down, you know, even though I've been vaccinated, yeah. not everybody has. And so, yeah. So I think it's smart to wait. Yeah, type well, you know, will be around for a long time, so yeah. we can have a type in later. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, Zoom meetings are nice, but the best part about type ins is introducing new people to the mm -hmm. typewriter themselves, yes. having them sit down and, and kids, especially, mm -hmm. right? So, yes. yeah, there's nothing to beats. Actually, in, yeah, that's right. I'd love to be able to. Typing on. Yeah. I'd love to be able to go to a type in just to be able to try out different machines and see which ones, you know. I want oh, yeah. to look out for right. it because um, my I've only got five machines in my collection and you know, I've seen a number of other machines at uh, antique stores, but uh, they're not always in great condition. And um, so I, nice there, to there try are certain ones that, you know, based, yeah, yeah. There are certain <laughs> ones I've seen that, you know, look interesting, but you know, I don't know how they type. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Like Olympia's I've never typed on Olympia or Hermes. What? Um, some, I know, right? Oh my God, she's <laughs> new. <laughs> I knew. I only started collecting about six months ago. So she has there's time. There's, time. there's still yeah. time. You, you, then, then I've been collecting longer than, than you have, but you have more typewriters than I do. <laughs> yeah. I That's in, because uh, I'm a little January. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way. In a good, good way. way. <laughs> well, I was going to take a summer, a big summer space. vacation, you know, last year, and of course. We know what happened with that. So I decided to spend all that money on typewriters instead. Nice. <laughs> I, I need to step up my my uh, my collecting game. <laughs> uh, but also here in Arkansas, they're pretty cheap. You know, most typewriters are between 20 and 50 bucks, even for, you know, I got a Royal Model A, which is the upgrade to the O for $40. So, $40. you know, it's exactly. So location <laughs> makes a difference in how, many typewriters we can collect yeah that is yeah, sad I mean, but I, true yeah yeah i was gonna say i i am um, i found my olympia sm3 um at an antique store for 35 dollars um wow. on sale uh it was normally it was originally 75 i think and then the other day i was looking at craigslist and somebody has one that isn't restored or anything like that on craigslist for uh 250 dollars and i thought that was kind of I was like, I don't think they're going to get that. Yeah, that's a yeah. little high. I could be wrong. Yeah, I could go to my local typewriter shop, John Lewis's shop here in Albuquerque, and for $300, I can buy one, a machine that's been completely refinished, redone by him. You know, so buying something off Craigslist for 250 that's never been touched no. is right. just no. isn't worth it, yeah. you know. I agree. So, Fully restored, it's worth it. Hey, yeah. that leads to one other comment I, I wanted to make, and I'm sorry to hog so much of the time here, um, but I really enjoyed uh, your uh, Royal KMM video, Joe, um, Definitely. And, and, and primarily because I love the fact that after all of the um, typewriter experiences that you've had, the machines that you've had, the videos you made, that you found a machine that you um, connected with the way you have with that typewriter it's it's pretty obvious that you're um really smitten with this machine and i think that's really cool i'm super happy for you 
And, and I especially love the fact that you have a person like Mr. Lewis involved in that story. And, and, yeah. and, and that's part of that machine that you now um, own or are the caretaker of, however you yep. uh, like to look at it. So uh, really happy for you. And that was a really enjoyable uh, video. Thank you, Bill. Uh, yeah, it, it, John is a real resource. And, you know, I've kept wanting over the years to make like a little documentary video about him, but he doesn't want really me to do it because he says he doesn't need any extra business. He's already so backlogged, you know, and so it, it's really would be for my own ego of doing a, a, a story about him, but it, he is a real resource here. I really appreciate him. Do you uh, think that you make a, a, a video of him for um, historical purposes? Maybe you could release it, you know, yeah, there might be another angle. Yeah, it could be a, a good angle to approach him with. Yeah, because just visually, I mean, he's in a little building that there's back rooms to the building that is just room after room of piled up typewriters for spare parts. Oh and just, just visually, like photographically, what that would be like just to photograph yeah. it. And Diane knows what I'm talking about. She visited. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's a real he's a real uh, resource, a real treasure. I think you know one of those guys that the, his generation's passing away. But um, in regard to the KMM, it was kind of an interesting experience because you know the first time I really had to sit down with a full size older standard upright typewriter was probably one of Kevin's and maybe his Underwood six. I think he has. And I noticed with that machine, you know, they're tall, right? And it puts the paper up higher compared to a nice portable. Idea. Yeah. So instead of looking down, oh, there's the burger that Indro has. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, instead of uh, looking down at your page with a portable, you're kind of looking more. And it, it kind of has this visual uh, it reduces visual distraction sitting in front of a tall typewriter. That the first thing I was on, what I noticed. And then most of the full size standard typewriters have really great touch. There's never an issue. I mean, it just kind of disappears in the background. It's kind of the way, the way I look at it. So, and then I had the SM3 for a while, which is a wonderful machine. It's just that particular machine. The carriage was extra wide and the carriage return is extra heavy uh, because of the weight of the carriage and the, and the amount of spring tension it needs in order to successfully move. It's just, a, it just wasn't, uh, it was actually too big of a machine. So um, anyway, so yeah, this ended up, the KMM ended up being really about the perfect size standard typewriter for me. So, yeah. Well, that's great. Thanks. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. all your videos are great, Joe. All I was them. thinking. I was thinking, Joe, maybe you could do one, um, another one of those books, like you did with the with the TV repair shop. Maybe uh, that would be a great John idea Lewis for John Lewis. Would a, it would be. It, yeah. yeah, exactly. Would be. Thanks for reminding me of that. Yeah, I'm, in fact, I'm surprised you remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was a fun project too. No, it is. I think photo books are one of the best ways to to document um, things in still imagery, better than pictures on the wall. I think maybe that way he would feel it would it would be less of an advertisement. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like commemorating what the he's documentation doing, what he's doing and right and we do have a pretty good relationship i mean uh he he likes to talk with me when i come over there i'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good listener so you know he's he opens up a lot and stuff so it's fun to talk with him uh, i'm hoping that you know if he can um sense or accept the the um the notion that there are people out here like us that have a genuine interest just in his uh, background, his history. Um, I, I've mentioned on here before, I think I, I'm going to spend some time and in interview Matt McCormick at mm -hmm. Ace Typewriter mm -hmm. here in Portland. Um, the trick is finding the time. He's been so busy. He, he's committed guests to me last year and um, he, he's busier than he's ever been um, in his whole career right now. He's, oh. He just doesn't have the time for me to come in and, um, you know, because we're going to sit down and have a, a lengthy conversation and I'm going to bring my field recorder with me so I can capture everything. And and, um, and I'm just genuinely interested. And I think he, he, he gets that, you know, but it's just it's, it's a matter of time for him. But 
my buddy sent me a picture of Mr. Lewis's shop um, that I wrote you about in the letter, Joe. Yeah. And it just, it looked like such a great space, you know, and it's like, Oh, I'd love to find out more about this, you know? So well, if there's well, a way you can pull have, that off. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, he used to have a museum in the front of the shop, a museum of antique, uh, instruments. It was not just typewriters. It was like uh, antique adding machines and uh, slide rules, big slide rules and all kinds of interesting stuff he had. He still has a lot of the paraphernalia, but he doesn't really have it set up as a museum anymore. But yeah, it's definitely a good project to pursue. I think so. Yeah, I wish you luck with that. Thanks. Very it good. looks like Ted is into replacing feats. He's, oh. yeah, he's in deep there. Says, <laughs> Orthopedic <laughs> surgery. <laughs> and photographing the process. Yeah. yeah. I have to make instructions, you know. <laughs> I don't know if you guys talked about it earlier, but Joe, I really enjoyed, you know, I enjoy all your episodes, but you did one with the rubber backing sheet. And I oh, yeah. was yeah. fascinated. And so you, you had some pretty good luck for the most yeah. part, make it quieter. Yeah, yeah I think it varies. Like, I think my um, my Royal Mercury. I was hoping it would it would it, it definitely made the Royal Mercury quieter. But it's almost like the the um, what is it? The shore hardness of the rubber sheet is a little mm -hmm. too soft. Mm -hmm. And on that particular typeface, it's it was a pica. The O's and the loops would kind of have mm -hmm. a slight fill in of ink. So, but it did certainly make the, the, the sound dampen a better. And I think on other typewriters, it seems to work a little better, but it, it's, yeah, it's probably the shore hardness is just a wee bit too, um, mm -hmm. too soft, but I do like the, the grippiness of it because it is rubber. So, you know, it, I've had problems with, especially on small portables, when you're trying to use a backing sheet of paper or maybe a sheet of plastic or something, mm -hmm. sometimes it just doesn't grip the paper very well. Or yeah, it the rubber's so hard. It's yeah, smooth. It right. And it, yeah, and if you thing isn't right, even. yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's what's nice about the rubber sheet is it it makes it grip, so it fixes that problem also. Mm -hmm. I want to try that. I well, before. Joe, where again did you buy that rubber sheet? You know, I bought this on Amazon and it was, I just searched for 164th inch uh, rubber. And I th yeah, I think I put a link in last week's episode. Oh, okay. I think in the comments. It's, it's still in my cart. I could yeah, it, it, the, it might also chat. be <laughs> in the video the comments to my video about that. I think I put the link, but I think someone subsequently to that tried looking at that link and they were sold out. But it so it may I be see. that you know that my I think, I think they're, my, they're back in stock now. <laughs> they might be back in stock. So yeah, but you have to get like, like twelve inches by thirty six inches, so you get like enough for four sheets of. You know, I, so. I found it just a smidge cheaper on eBay. I ordered some and got it in a few days ago. Yeah. Have you tried it, Bob? Have you had a chance to try it? No, I haven't got a chance to try it yet, but I'm I'm looking forward okay. to it. Oh, and yeah, by the I way, Bob, great solution. I was wanting to tell you that I I'm going to be doing a review of your of your speedy spooler, and yeah. uh, I just didn't get around to it last week, but I'll try to do it this week. So. Yeah, and no I, might, I might make it part of a bigger video, like uh, maybe I'll do a mail time video or something like that, and I'll include that in there. So, anyways, okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks yep. for the link, Eric. Was that? Uh, and thanks for the link. You, uh, you posted oh, yeah, yeah. I put, I put the uh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. My, uh, my local repair shop for these Smith Premier machines, although at the t uh, I've uh, they suggest they actually pulled out some old IBM Selectric feed rollers. Oh, or, oh there it goes. And, a lot uh, of as, a, as a foot. Oh, uh, foot rollers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they also work in Corona three ranks as uh, feed rollers. Oh, do they? Yep. Yeah. The direct replacement. They'll drop right in. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Speaking of uh, the feed rollers um, and like things being slippery and not being able to grab the um, the paper all that well, I, I had a machine um, that I had got that I had a problem with, with that happening where I couldn't I couldn't feed a, a sheet of paper through it to save my life. But um, I found that uh, if I lightly sanded the feed rollers a little bit, 
um, it gave it enough grip to make it so that I could feed a, a, a sheet of paper through there pretty, pretty good. And um, it works. It's been working great. The, you know, ever since I did that, I haven't had any issues. That's a good tip, uh, actually, because the diameter of the feed rollers is not as critical as the platen itself, right? The platen has to be a certain diameter so the type slugs can imprint properly because they're actually curved to match the platen. So, yeah, you could sand down your feed roller, and the, if you lose a little bit of diameter on it, it doesn't hurt it that much. It's just mainly getting it roughened up. Good tip, Eric. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Let's see, while we have a little uh, uh, downtime here, I'm going to share my screen again. Is this a lull? This is a lull. I, I sensed a lull coming, so I had it ready. <laughs> um, all right. Oops. Am I? I think I'm sharing the wrong one, actually. Uh, I see YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I thought I had it all set up. Uh, let's see. Let's try this again. screen ah this one okay all right so there's a couple uh, new additions to the uh, type pals website typepals.com um first i added this special thanks section because again these these people have been extremely extremely generous um so i i, I felt they they needed recognition um and then we have um uh, under the upcoming live stream, um, we have the typing there. And you'll see, I have the whole month of March done. Oh, in wow. I love that. Wow. On the 13th, uh, yeah, we're going to have a bonus episode. The 13th is a Saturday. Uh -huh. It was uh, Saturday the uh, 13th at 11 a.m. It's just going to be a type and talk essentially. So no no typing prompt, no theme or anything. Just a, a time to hang out for for other people because I've had several people um, mention that you know they attend church uh, during that time and mm -hmm. um, they're very disappointed that they haven't been able to attend. So I'm I'm going to throw these in there probably one one a month, uh, most likely um uh a saturday like that um because i alternate uh working saturdays so every other saturday i basically have off so i'll just throw one in there a, a month uh just to um give um those people an opportunity to attend um because I, I do feel bad that, you know, it started as such an odd time and yet now everybody's used to it. <laughs> so I would really hate to change the actual time of the meeting and then lose a bunch of you, you know? <laughs> um, so I, I figured throwing in that, that extra, that extra meeting, um, it won't kill me. And, uh, <laughs> well, uh, that's good. Yeah. The, 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 the that's this is a religion. I mean, for me, at least, typewriters, yeah. this is, I come to church on Monday. You know, in the name of Chris Latham, Souls, Royal Olympia, and the Vogue typeface. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is a cult, actually. It not is a religion. It kind yeah. of is. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Tell it like that, and everybody will come instead of going to their own church, you know, and then we can throw in a prayer. There you go. There I you thought go. this was a gang. This is oh, a we're gang. gang. <laughs> That's right. Is it a gang or a religion? <laughs> gang, cult, or religion? Pick your. I like this cult. I like the cult. Yeah. Like the freedom. <laughs> Did Joe just throw up a gang sign? I know. Yeah, that's my gang <laughs> sign. <laughs> uh, well, we do have the right Reverend uh, Ted Monk here with us, so he, he uh, can, he's a. Yeah, we need a. Ah, uh, I can. Gang. I suppose I can he's do a church thing. Doing the services. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Yeah. Jesus says, clean your type slugs every day. <laughs> Wait, I have a couple if I do that, I'll wear out the brush on the typewriter. Oh, <laughs> there's a special place in, in Hades for those who chop their keys. Oh, yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. Bar and brimstone. <laughs> I, I have a couple typewriters that, uh, and, and it, I'm sure it's partly due to the, the ribbon I'm using. 
but I have to keep a, like a Kleenex handy because just after like a few lines, the, the letters are already filling up with ink. So then I just dab it with the, the Kleenex and get the excess ink out. But it's really bizarre. Uh, is it, I don't is know. Just the ribbon? I, I say, well, they're very inky ribbons. So that might be. Right, yeah. That might be a good candidate for using cheap ribbons. The cheap ones on, on Amazon that aren't very darkly inked normally, maybe that's a good candidate for it. Yeah. It, or the it could be, keepers. yeah, memory keepers. It could be this, the, uh, the spacing between the platen and the type bars when they're, you know, when the type slug is up at the platen, you know how there's a back and forth adjustment on some machines for the, for the, for the carriage itself. And maybe that one is a little too close and it's hitting a little hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think they say if you use a, in the stencil position without the ribbon being in the way, use a, a normal thickness sheet of typing paper, whatever that is, you should be able to push the type bar, the type bar up against its hard stop. And then you should be able to barely move a piece of paper between the type slug and the rubber. And if it feels too tight, it could be that maybe that adjustments off. Yeah. Or maybe somebody is, is that, platen been resurfaced to like maybe if you put a if you put a piece of uh, a, a sleeve of heat shrink it makes it a little tighter perhaps or something like that yeah i'm, I'm not sure um I'll, I'll have to look at it again but i i, I it, to me my impression was it was the original platen okay yeah mm -hmm. um i know some machines are just darker imprinting than others yeah. and it could be that a mm -hmm. uh, carriage alignment between the platen and the typing position is okay. i've definitely had um ribbons that uh really like it, it looked like the, the type looked really messy um when i first changed the ribbon but then after a while um it kind of started to clean up and i think it it might just be like really really inky at first and then after you know after maybe it gets to the other side the first time then then it uh it starts to look more normal and perform how it should. Yeah, yeah. It probably just depends on the on the uh, the ribbon itself. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, my KMM did that a little bit because it's an elite typeface, so they're a little more prone to that, anyways, because it's a smaller font. But as I've been using it, and, and also John Lewis tends to put a really dark, inky ribbon in the chains, and so. As it's been, I've been using it, it's been getting better. But also I noticed this, this uh, uh, onion skin paper, it actually works quite well on the onion skin for that mm. if it's too inky, because I guess the paper has less cushion, uh, less padding in, on that really super thin paper. And so it doesn't fill in the loops as well or as badly. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Joe, I think in your latest blog, <clears throat> excuse me, your latest blog post, you were, you were talking about how you've, you've uh, switched back to the construction paper as a backing sheet? Well, it was just an experiment. It, this was strictly with the uh, Royal Mercury and the rubber sheet, as I mentioned earlier to me. Um, just the Royal Mercury, it, it actually dampens the sound real nicely. And it, everything else about it is really nice, except it fills in the loops of the letters, a little bit of ink too much on the rubber sheet. Yeah. Uh, only that machine so it really depends on uh you know how your machine is set up but yeah that so construction paper seems to be for that machine an optimal um cho choice you know so yeah yeah i i guess my my one because i i thought about using construction paper but it, it seems like the the pads always come in these odd sizes for like they do they're nine by twelve inches usually okay and okay yeah so you just got to take a sheet and cut it down to size and yeah and just use it use it until you wear it out basically yeah okay I was thinking since I have spare rubber because they sell this in this three foot long roll maybe I'll try to do a giveaway one of these days oh. Um, you know, because I don't need the extra pieces, right? I, I can only use one piece at a time. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I'll probably do a giveaway here one of these one of these weeks. That'd be fun. Yeah. Always auction it off on eBay to the highest bidder. 
<laughs> yes. Put, put your signature on it. Yeah, That's right. I'll put my signature on it. I'll sign it in one of those wet gold colored marker pins, you know, the yeah, yeah. wherever they are. <laughs> world famous Joe Venturi. Yeah, the world famous rubber sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Only one in existence. That's right. And it, and it, go, and it goes to a good cause. Me. <laughs> <laughs> the proceeds go to a good cause no <laughs> i should do that <laughs> so may what are you typing i'm trying to answer your question because i didn't do my homework oh, last okay. night excellent <laughs> excellent <laughs> better late than never <laughs> better yes <laughs> i forget sure. we have typing prompts now <laughs> yeah yeah but you know it's it's just like a fallback conversation right. I you know, it could be that if, if you don't do your homework, Gregory will shush you. Shush. <laughs> Mute your microphone if you don't do yeah. your homework, right? That's right. <laughs> Put us in yeah. detention. Yes. He is a librarian. He will shush you. <laughs> Look at that. So, sometimes I wish we could shush people more often at, at our branch in particular because we're, we're located inside a mall and... I, th I think being inside a mall, people don't they don't necessarily perceive us as a library and that they should be quiet. Um, you know, they're out in the mall, you know, having their fun or whatever, and then they come in to the library and they kind of continue that a little bit. And I mean, if they're really rowdy, you know, we definitely talk to them. But um, just the space that we're in, we, we can't always do that. So plus, there's one big room which does not help. <laughs> Wow. So, so yeah, I was I was looking at Bill's comment just now in the chat, and Bill, you want to give us a little rundown of your comment? Oh, uh, so just this was a thought spurred on just listening to the conversation here. But um, yeah, basically, just what I what I typed out is um, I'm just curious to know what everyone feels is their um, the best typewriter that you own in in terms of the uh the quality of the printed output so mm -hmm. when you finish typing your page and you take a look at it which which machine uh leaves you with the page featuring like the best uh clarity uh crispness of characters the the consistency of the you know the printed line of text from one to the next um just which which makes for the most uh, i guess uh pleasing page mm -hmm. of typed output Olympia and the Mercury. I agree. Olympia and the Mercury. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was going to say the same thing. Seriously. <laughs> the, me, the I think Mercury. my real quiet deluxe. Yeah. No. yeah. I don't have an a... Olympia nor a Mercury, but I have a lot of brothers that just type beautifully and perfectly, mm -hmm. although the feel is a little stiffer. And then, you know, like Eric said, the, my royal quiet deluxe. And of course, the the Smith Corona Silent Super, really nice. Mm -hmm. And electric typewriters. They're yes. awesome. Well, that's, <laughs> yes. They you know, have that's, a perfect imprint every time. <laughs> that's a fair comment, actually. That's interesting. I, I haven't played around with um, electric, so... Um, and I guess well, that was one of the things that they careful. You know, were known rabbit for. Rabbit. So. Yeah, that's just what I need. Well, the, the, <laughs> the, the type composer. Are, yeah, the type bar electrics, <laughs> you could have misaligned alignment, yeah. right? But mm -hmm. uh, the, the, yeah, the daisy wheels and the therm, well, thermals, their alignment's good, but then they're not always dark, right? It depends on mm -hmm. the paper you're using. But um, yeah, I think for me, it's most of the European machines tend to be more consistent with a better imprint, like the Hermes Adler's. and the Olympias and Adler's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I I can vouch for um, Eric's typewriter. Um, the the letter I received from you, Eric, it, it had phenomenal uh, print quality. Uh, it was impressive. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Just, well, yeah, just I, um, I, I was. I use the Royal Quiet Deluxe, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it, um, mm -hmm. I believe that's right. Yeah. One of my yeah. favorites too. Really yeah, my, my wife has a, a, a quiet deluxe and, and um, uh, the output of your machine looks um, much different, you know, in a good way. Um, it, yeah, it, I actually, I just, I just changed the, the ribbon on it because um, 
uh, I wanted to try a ribbon that had um, a, uh, you know, the, the red um, setting on it too. Mm -hmm. So I could, I could type things in red, but I, I noticed that it's not as dark as the one that I had in it. Um, it still has right. a nice imprint, but um, if I can compare just to show the difference. I mean, this isn't really an apples to apples comparison because there are two different types of paper too, but I don't know how well it's going to show up on the camera. Not well at all, <laughs> but it's just a little bit lighter. It's still, it's still really legible, but I wish it was as dark as the other one. Yeah. From the same brand too. So it's kind of inconsistent. It's uh, the FJA products mm -hmm. on Amazon. I do agree with the others about the Olympias, uh, specifically the, uh, the Olympia SM3 um, that David Peterson uh, gave to me. That, that is pretty amazing. And then the kind of the oddball one that is the typewriter that I, I thought I would get rid of very quickly, and yet I can't let go of it um, because it works so perfectly and types so beautifully is the uh, Olivetti Lettera 25, which um, is kind of the one that Garbage. no one wants. <laughs> and yet it, it, it works beautifully. I mean, it's not the most pleasant to type on, but as far as working, it works beautifully, flawlessly, it has a nice imprint. So I, for that reason, I haven't been able to get rid of it. It's like, it's horrible to look at, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, but that kind of gets to the, I think the heart of my question is if you remove things like the look, the feel, the touch, which, you know, those things are important to me, I think to most everyone, but if just, if you break it down just by the output alone, yeah, um, it's something that um, um, I, I found kind of interesting, um, especially now that I start receiving uh, letters from others, you know, like looking at Eric's letter in particular, you know, it's just, it's interesting, just something else to um, discuss. Yeah, yeah. It's funny though, because I get, I actually get a lot of enjoyment when, when typewriters print very in, in, uh, that's me right there. Yeah, very <laughs> imperfectly. Yeah. yeah, and, and I appreciate I like that too, janky. actually. Yeah. I, I, I totally understand that. And, 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 um, I'm the same way it, when I'm in the mood for, I, you know, I have different machines that I use for different moods. I've found, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm looking for something and I just want it to look a certain way. And so, yeah, I, I get all of that. So that yeah. makes sense to me. Yeah. I was even thinking about the comparison between my galaxy 12 and my Coronet automatic 12, you know, both the same era, one's a type R electric, one's manual. And the, the Coronet certainly had a darker imprint because it was slamming those type bars, you know, at hard, hard force, mm -hmm. right, all the time. It always had a dark imprint, whereas my Galaxy, it all depended on how I hit it, right? So, uh, so that's another thing, right? Sometimes the type R electrics can look more consistent just because they're hitting with consistent force more than you would normally. But I agree with Ted, though, and, and you guys, I, I do like of the varied styles of type uh, quality, imprint quality, but I was never always like that. I think back in the eighties when I bought my Smith Corona, what is it? SE 100, the little black or Daisy dark Will. gray wedge Daisy wheel. Uh, I was strictly interested in something that would give me the same quality imprint as a selectric because I was, I had been typing poetry when I was in the Navy borrowing my cheap's typewriter and I wanted to continue doing that when I got out. So, but that was back when I didn't really know, uh, wasn't really aware of the aesthetics of typewriters or the other part of it besides, you know, it's like you could drive a car, any kind of a car to get you from point A to point B, mm -hmm. but the experience of a particular car, like how the interior is, how the controls are laid out and, you know, how the steering wheel and the shifter and all that feels is, is a whole nother thing, right? It's not just transportation. That's kind of like, like the way it is with typewriters. When you become conscious of them, you become aware of the, a lot of other aspects of them. So yeah. you're going to think it, I've been working on a, um, a blog post 
and I use that exact phrase um, uh, and talking about your, you actually inspired me to create a blog post or work on a blog post uh, um, about my SG3. And, and I was mentioning getting from point A to point B and cars and how that applies to typewriters, portables wow. versus standards and having the features. So now I think I'm going to have to redo that. <laughs> no, <laughs> that means you're on the right track to begin with. <laughs> That's what it means. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. I think. Yeah. I find that. Or, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I, I find that when I write letters specifically with, with uh, a daisy wheel electronic and the the imprint is so perfect and consistent i think to myself like the recipient isn't isn't going to they're not the experience for them is not going to be any different than if i had typed it on a computer and printed it out mm -hmm. and i mean yeah. i i love using my uh, daisy wheel electronics but I can see how from the, the recipient's end, it, it would not, you know, it'd just be like getting a regular computer printed letter. You, you uh, can get a cloth ribbon for daisy wheels, you know. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're usually not any good because the, the rollers that uh, feed the ribbon inside are made of foam and that foam disintegrates. It's the same thing with the printer uh, ribbons for old printers from the 80s. That matrix printers, yeah. Um, those those cartridges come apart, but if you take it apart and replace those rollers, which I've done, <clears throat> um, you can replace them with uh, you know either rubber things that you cut out of hose or something, uh, or other rollers that you can find in other uh, machines. Um, and if you rejuvenate those rollers, then it'll work, and you can okay. even WD forty the ribbon and get it working again and uh it's a process but uh, you can actually use cloth ribbons on wow daisy wheels <laughs> thumbs up from bob there <laughs> it's a great process it works very well i i wish more people did it i mm -hmm. wish there was more uh you know I, I wish there was a youtube video about i think it's wonderful so i good good, good for you monk especially for people with colored ribbons and whatever oh, yeah. else I, yeah yeah, yeah, I've done a lot, especially uh, if I I've re-inked ribbon where I just add a bit of WD-40 uh, to the ink itself, like 20% mm -hmm. WD-40, 80% ink. It, it's wonderful. And some ribbons are just clacked out and you can see that and that's quite yeah. obvious, but sometimes they just dry up. So, you know, most but, of the time they just dry up. You can you can very easily revive them. Yeah, um, it, basically they just lose the carrier that the ink uh, sits in. And if you can get that kind of oily uh carrier back into the ink then it just it bright good as new and the wd-40 stays oily for a very long yep. time i have a ribbon that i wd-40 six years ago and it is still going strong the blue well, one the blue one yep I'm a fan. <laughs> i like you monk you've got great ideas sir <laughs> but yeah it's it, try it, that with fine. some of the ribbons i got from amazon yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Just a really light coat. You don't need to like, uh, I spool them into a, a box so that the ribbon is just kind of laying around in the box and you just do a really light coat of WD-40, just enough to make the ribbon look, you know, kind of damp, but not enough to get WD-40 in a pool down at the bottom of the box. It's, you just want to do a really light spray. And then you uh, run it through a cloth as you're re-spooling it so that you're wiping off the excess. And uh, you know, let it sit for a couple of days so that it soaks in and into the ink and breaks up the ink and uh, you're good to go. So it, so it'd probably be better not to use the little straw thing, right? The straw attachment. No, so definitely do not. Part. You want to use the spray that, that yeah, really yeah. sprays it out wide. Yep. Very good. You're, you're muted, Joe. Yeah, and then use a speedy spooler and get it all back up right quick. I was going to say a speedy spooler. I have a black ribbon that I did the WD-40 trick to, and it's still sitting in a Ziploc baggie. And I, in, this was maybe six to nine months ago. I haven't even spooled it up yet to see what happens. It's just been sitting there. So we'll see. I may, may try to try that and see if it works. In fact, that might be a good use for the speedy spooler on, on my video. We'll mm -hmm. see. There you go. Yeah, you definitely want to, uh, when you take it out of the plastic bag, because it's still wet in there, uh, spool it on your spool, wipe it down, uh, and give it a couple of days. You want to let it 
kind of dry up at least. You don't want to mm -hmm. have splat. You don't want it to splash when you're hitting the type right. bars against the ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't you want to type pink spots. <laughs> Although that can be an interesting look, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what happened the first time I did it. And then I did what you said, Ted, wiped it down, and then it's mm -hmm. perfect. Yep. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I came across the typewriter. Well. Yeah, I came across the typewriter, a classic 12 that I had purchased, and it came loaded with film ribbon on oh, traditional spools. Uh, so someone yeah. had replaced it with film ribbon on, and that type's really nice. Mm -hmm. Of course, there was only a little bit left on that typewriter, just enough for me to play around with it. But yeah, I guess you would go buy film ribbon and just you take can buy it, it off. Spools. You what can is buy film spools. ribbon? Uh, it's plastic ribbon with the, it's like carbon ribbon, mm -hmm. um, like they use in electronic typewriters. Mm -hmm. So, or, or it's electrics. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same kind of ribbon, but they used to sell it on spools. You could buy it for your typewriter. Uh, I actually have a spool of it somewhere, but. Uh, huh. do, you, do you have a link, uh, Ted, where they, you can still buy that on spools? You cannot buy it anymore. <laughs> okay. So you just got to, you just got to buy like a selector cartridge and just tear it apart and. Pull oh, up. yeah, that's a good the, idea. The yeah. selector carbon is slightly bigger than a regular. Oh, okay. So a regular, like a, like an H series Smith Corona cartridge, maybe. Maybe that would work. Yeah, I don't know. Is it reversible? Uh, no, it's one time no. use. Okay. Only. Those are All pretty right. thin, though. Yeah, they're pretty thin. Well, it's yeah. hard to be narrow. Like so be careful what you type. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yeah, they're one pass only, and you got to make sure that your uh, ribbon advance moves it one full character between type between letters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a, a YouTuber that um, he he was showing. I actually think it was a thermal typewriter he, he was showing, but he was showing it with uh, the ribbon, and it, the ribbon he had it, it was well used by the previous owner. Uh, and I, th I think he was showing a Panasonic thermal typewriter because that, that's one that's been on my yeah. forever and they're just mine too. <laughs> and um, but he he kind of uh, revealed something that I had never thought about. But with those film ribbons, it's leaving everything you type on that ribbon, so you could mm -hmm. go back to it and it's yes. like the like, Russians will hack you. Be careful. Yeah, it's, it's like data mining. <laughs> That's why you always burn your ribbons after using them. There you go. <laughs> the NSA will hack you. Yeah. <laughs> Not just the Russians. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was cool enough to be hacked by anybody. I'm just going to throw it out. There. I know, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> and you Bob, I think Bob. you're plenty cool. You're plenty uh, cool. Bob. You know. Bob, I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. So would your little spooler thingy work on something this wide? It could. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah, set up to. That's a one inch? I think it's one and a quarter. Oh, no, no, nothing bigger than one inch. Yeah. Oh. I'm only one man. I can't, I can't. Get that <laughs> you need a longer bolt, right? To yeah, basic... yeah, you need a longer bolt. But if you want one, I'll make one for you very easily and, and send it to you. You know, if you order one, just say, hey, I need, I need the bolt longer. Oh, <laughs> But it's so rare, bolt. you know, nobody ever, nobody has ever, nobody's ever done that. I've been having a lot of fun. I will admit, I mean, I've been selling like one every other day. Mm -hmm. so I've had to restock and one of the parts I can't get. Um, so I've got, I've got these plumbing suppliers out chasing me and it's the, uh, it's around rubber with the, uh, anyways, it's for a five eighths pipe and nobody, you know, nobody plums with five eighths anymore. It's all half inch now. So so that that's been a real have I think I've got about 28 of them left. So at this rate I'm going to run out in 2 months and I haven't I haven't gotten that part restocked and that's the expensive part. I think I'm paying like 3 3 and a half dollars a piece for those. So uh, it, it, it's fine, you know, hopefully but nobody's manufacturing them and, and it, nobody's manufacturing them anymore because who uses 5/8 pipe anymore. So well, we'll 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 see how it all works out. Hopefully yeah. I can keep making them and keep them going but I, I've been real lucky to, you know, it's selling one every other day. I mean, if I came out with another 50 inventions like this and sold them like that, I could probably retire. So <laughs> I just yeah. need another 50 inventions or, or things to provide to the community. I am excited. I do have a nice set of 
type bars or, or type uh, bending bars, you know, type bar tools uh, that I'm going to start recreating. So I'll have to see uh, which ones people want. I mean, I don't want to just sell like, here's a set for $400. It'd be neat to just sell two or three of them, uh, you know, for a hundred dollars or something. Uh, but that, that, that's a fun part of having your own machine shop, right? Uh, or a few tools to machine with. So that, that would be really exciting. I hope, um, I hope I can get that going within the year and, and start providing type bar bending tools to us all. So we'll see. Excellent. It's all nickel and dime stuff. <laughs> Very good. Let me just say that, it, it, you know, having being able to see everyone on the screen now, because, you know, I, before I was on the iPhone and I could only see four people, it's, <laughs> it's really nice seeing, yes. you know, we have our discussion going and yet there's people working on typewriters, there's people mm -hmm. typing on typewriters. Mm -hmm. And I think that really adds to the, uh, yes. the viewer experience, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. So that, because I know sometimes we get off topic. <laughs> so it, it's nice to have those visual reminders that this is Typewriter Club Live and, <laughs> and see people working on typewriters and typing. And yeah, so. <laughs> well, I, I think you did it right, Gregory. You know, I've got like five computers in my house and each one serves a different purpose. Uh, so I, I think you're doing it. I've got my studio computer, my writing computer, my my 07 computer that I just do Word doc on, whatever. Like, so you're you're doing fine, man. Excellent. And I, I only have one hooked up to the internet, and that's this one. It's my little laptop. So <laughs> the other ones are hooked to the internet. So I think there's a, a you know good for you for getting a, a separate computer. It's I'm sure it's a few hundred dollars, quite the investment, but you did well. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank Very good. you for this. This has been so much fun. Yeah. So I was going to tell you guys that I uh, I mailed off my Hermes rocket to this young kid in California last week, and then the bag that I had it stored in is now is freed up. So I had this old netbook computer, an MSI Wind, a netbook computer from like the mid two thousands when I, whenever those came out. Anyway, so I recently had Linux installed in it. And so now that I have a little bag for my netbook computer and it's strictly an offline computer just for word processing or whatever I want to do, you know, if I need a little laptop to, to write with. But anyways. Excellent. But no, mostly what I do is offline. I think there's a lot to that. And then I put it all in my, my studio, of course, is offline because the last thing I need when I'm recording is something accidentally popping up that I forgot to put out. So I put it all in my... Um, What's that box that holds all the memory? The memory box? Uh, the drive? Hard drive. drive. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's a two. No, it's just a 1K drive. Um, and, you know, and I just load it to there and then I bring it to this computer and then load load to the internet from there. It's amazing how we all talk about how our computers are connected to the internet uh, via, um, you know, via wireless, via... Well, that's another thing. I, I usually do it with a wire. I mean, I don't need wireless, right? So I, I don't know why we're so hip and cool on having um, having wireless internet. The guys walk around my neighborhood and always knock on my door going, you don't have this wireless internet. No, I don't need it. I also don't have a TV. Well, how do you watch TV? I don't. I read books. Go somewhere else, kid. You know, leave it alone. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's remarkable. So we we don't need it, and I'm okay with just the one computer that hooks to the internet. And uh, th this one's on wireless right now. It's actually on my neighbor's wireless, but she knows, so she's cool. I throw her a few dollars for it. <laughs> you know, it, it works fine. So I, I don't know why we're so why we're so hung up on it. And my favorite is the other computer that I rough draft onto. That just has Windows 7, so it only hooks to Google Docs. So I can take whatever I've, I can take the rough draft manuscript that I've typewritten and then retype it to, to Google. And then, of course, once I decide it's all good, uh, and that's nice. Obviously, I can edit or read it and edit on my phone as I'm going along. And sometimes I can't, but most of the time I can't. Most of the time I've got, to, sometimes I have too much editing to do, and it's like, well, I got to get back to a computer. But on my phone, I can do that. And then I just upload it to window docs and publish it from there. But I think there's, there's all sorts of ways we can use these things. And I'm sure everything I'm spouting, a lot of you already do, but always question if you need to be hooked to the internet. That's all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I think there's something to be said about uh, sort of compartmentalizing um, our technology and the things that they do. Like uh, so, so many of our devices, they, they do, you know, so many different things and it can be kind of overwhelming and hard to get into the state of mind um, of what you're, you know, intending to use that device for. And so when it's only intended to do one thing and do it well, it's a lot easier to reach that state of mind and, you know, be productive with that, I feel like. Exactly. And that kind of goes with writing, you know, with, you know, with typewriters or fountain pens or, you know, with listening to music, you know, on, on vinyl, mm -hmm. um, you know, just being able to be there and focus entirely on what you're doing and not have any distractions, I think is, is really valuable. Mm -hmm. Well, it can cause issue if you're a bit of a minimalist. Greg, Gregory's been to my house. It's a true bachelor pad. I've got <laughs> computers and typewriters in every corner. I've got carburetors. I've got motorcycles in the living room. I, I don't care. You know, I do it that way on purpose so women don't come in and see their, <laughs> their stuff in my house, right? <laughs> Not really. That, but, that uh, reminds me, Bob, that I had a, a friend named Bob who used to work at a local TV station as an engineer. <laughs> and he had an entire broadcast studio set up in his living room. It was like 19-inch equipment racks with old, outdated broadcast equipment, like video switchers. He had a, vi a studio camera. He even had made up a, a pirate TV. TV station transmitter uh, that he was he was transmitting TV signals on his roof antenna to a friend's house about three miles away who also they both had Yagi antennas and they were just pointing at each other and they had like a cable TV channel three strip amp like a like a 25 decibel strip amp and he would broadcast channel three on a Yagi antenna and you know they would just do you know he had a little special effects switcher like they used to use in the control room and you know bachelors right <laughs> why not I know yeah. uh, even in my kitchen, uh, there's a blank wall in my kitchen where there used to be a nook that people would set out and eat breakfast. Well, that's where I keep all my riding gear. So I just have racks of riding gear and camping gear. And, <laughs> yeah. That's what know, mine's you know, diapers. Not just for men. Some women yes. do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see being an average man, and may I apologize? I don't know. Uh, I know. I know. Single, I, know. <laughs> you know. I can see like coming over to May's house and going, Hey, this is my kind of place. I don't need yeah, to bring exactly. her crap. I can just hang out in her crap, right? So. I've got tools. Yeah. Right? Mm. I've got plenty of tools. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like no tools as much I, as I, I think... like typewriters. He's a nice girl. It Let it all serve you. <laughs> not serve it. Yeah. Right. Well, I've got something to show you guys if you want to see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. Okay. Look at this. It's uh, Olympia. Oh. Yeah. No slidey round. Ah, fresh <laughs> rubber. Oh, wow. Nice. Fresh, farm fresh rubber. Farm fresh to your table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, how do we get those from you, Monk? You got well, uh, today? Joe and Greg are, are getting a special gift package uh, that I sent out to them. Okay. Um, try. I'll try to act surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, I have, uh, when I make feet, I make a. Uh, I have several molds that I have to do because uh, I mix up enough stuff to make more than one set of feet, but I can only make one set of feet in a mold. So I pour several molds. So uh, some usually I have loads and loads of extra feet of various kinds that I don't uh, right. like right now. I have a whole bunch of Hermes 3000 HP, HP 258s, uh, uh, Olympia SM3 and 4, and apparently now I have Olympia SM9 and 7. Wow. Uh, available. Nice. So, Beats uh, don't fail me now. <laughs> if, if someone is in desperate need, let me know and I will see okay. what I can do for you. Well, I, I will. And, I, and I've learned, Monk, you know, being here in Southern California, the only people I repair typewriters for are, are rich people and famous people. So when they want new feet, they need them now, you know, mm -hmm. and, and if you've got them, I'm, I'd be very excited to purchase those from you. So kind, kind of one of the things that I've been trying to do by making videos and demonstrating this stuff is to show that it's actually really easy to do. Yeah, uh, it's not yeah. expensive to do it. You know, as much as it costs you to buy, you know, a couple pairs of feet from Tony Casillo uh, for 44 bucks a piece plus shipping. Um, you right. can get the stuff to make your own feet. Yeah basically right. cast your own so that'd be great uh, how about if when covid's over i come out for the weekend 
and you do a whole class just for me. None of you all are invited. <laughs> and we do a whole class on how to do this, and we'll put it all up on YouTube at the end. Like that, that would be that would be awesome. Bob, I, I you should start a series called Typewriters of the Rich and Famous. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I was trying to entice uh, Joe Van Cleveland to do an, uh, a combined video with me where we would go through and do uh, like a JP1 silencing or yes. you know, yeah. maybe even a Royal Mercury and, and do, that. do a complete soundproofing job on one and uh, show people sure. how to do that. Yeah. That would work. That'd be great. Well, I'm happy to be the cameraman and sit and learn. So you just let me, I, I got a motorcycle. I can be there pretty fast. <laughs> Speaking of typewriter feet, um, has anybody heard about what's going on with uh, Mr. Dade? Uh, Mr. Dade has died. Oh, really? Uh, according to what I've heard, uh, I've heard yeah, several people say that, that he has, he has died. I've not seen an obituary yet, but. Uh, well, my um, condolence to the family. That's yeah. what a loss. I mean, it's uh, sad extreme loss he was a really good guy yeah um yeah i was very sad to hear that because i've i really only interacted it with him once uh, i did a correspondence with him and uh soon after i wrote back to him he he'd already passed away so mm. well I, I i gotta say for you know i really got trust people trust between people and uh you know but you get used to not expecting trust and steve dave was one of those people that when i called him and said hey i need some you know platins and some feet and stuff like that he said okay i'll get i'll send them send me your address and i said well how much he goes i'll put the bill in it you just make sure you pay me once you get everything yeah. and uh, that blew me away because we don't see a lot of that these days and um you know that meant a lot to me just because i'm a good human being mm -hmm. and i will you know, show you the trust in return. He was one of those folks that you don't see a lot of anymore. So I'm very sorry for his loss, but yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. He put, he put feet on this machine just a month ago. This is a four bank 1930 Royal portable. Mm -hmm. And so it's got the lock-in case. These fit. So he did this just a month ago, mm -hmm. maybe a month and a week ago. I mean, you know, this, this thing's great. So no, he was, he was quite the dude. I, I, I think it's been three weeks, you know, since he's passed. And I don't know what his family's doing with, you know, his, his rubber business. I know I've got a buddy knocking. I've got a buddy who's waiting a little bit. He's going to knock on their door and see what it takes to consume it. That would be good because he's got, yeah. uh, well, not only his, his operations for replacing uh, like Corona rubber, like uh, platinum rubber, uh, he's got all those STL files for 3D printing feet and, and such. So, you know, it'd be a well, yeah. real shame to lose that. I'm, I mm -hmm. would hope that someone would get it. Uh, find some way to to keep you know preserve that and, and yeah yeah I got a buddy yeah. in LA who's who's ready to knock on the door and and figure it out so I hope that's, that's I hope that hear. pays out mm -hmm. if not I'll I'll recommend him to you someone's got to figure it out mm -hmm. uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Corona fours and Steve was the only place you could get new basically new Corona four feet uh, mm -hmm. and plans and he was the master of that um, and I need like I I bought like twelve sets from him. A year and a half ago but i've gone through them already and i need more so i feel bad because i don't know where i gotta get feet uh, you gotta make your own from now on i guess well i guess mm -hmm. but you know if uh if if i'm gonna hog all your time and not share the secrets then i'm never gonna learn <laughs> 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 well i do a video up where i'm where i pour feet i don't have a video up uh, i actually shot video for uh doing the molds um, and I got to edit it together and, and release it, but, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to put videos up showing how I do it. So if you guys want to follow along, for the, love of God. <laughs> the typewriter, God, thank you, Monk. Thank you. Well, you know, it's, it's easy to do. It's just it's not what we difficult. need is a new hobby. <laughs> <laughs> is it on your channel, Ted? Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, do I have? Do a link. Is this going to take me away from collecting typewriters? No, you're going to make feed for your typewriter. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My channel. Joe, you know, it's conceivable you could actually build the feet first and then find the typewriter to go with them. So it could increase. <laughs> oh, I could, I could go feet first. I could do it yeah. feet first. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, link in the chat. All right. Excellent. Thanks. Now that, that's the one where, where you're you're pour, pouring it, right? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, have you done one where you're making the molds? Uh, I have a video shot for it. I just haven't edited it together. Oh, that's the one. Okay. It together. Yeah. Got so, it. Got it. That, the whole process. That's okay. Great, Ken. Perfect. Perfect. Very good. But by the way, that video is is very zen. It's it, it was kind of relaxing <laughs> watching it. <laughs> I was just I was listening to Joe Van Cleve's uh, Austin typewriter thing, so you can hear that in the background. That is zen means he almost fell asleep <laughs> listening to me talk. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I kept it lively when I said, "Joe, what's a bull whip?" <laughs> yeah, what's a bull whip? <laughs> There's such a good actually... point about that. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> yeah. What's that mean? Oh, I've actually fallen asleep watching your videos. I've, I've, you have so many of them, I have to put them on a long plate. Oh, I know. Sometimes I, <laughs> I, I watch actually, them. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. I take you in bed oh, with me, Joe. Oh, no. Oh, I have to, now I have to tell my wife. <laughs> she goes, who's this lady that wants to? <laughs> yeah, so much better than counting sheep. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> My wife did say that Joe has a very uh, a soothing voice. Yes. <laughs> well, you have to. Alone. You have to in I... order to lead a cult. In order to be a cult leader, you have to. <laughs> That's right. You have to relax people. You have to relax. <laughs> to believe in you. Right? Now drink the Kool Aid. Drink the Kool Aid. Drink the Tang. Drink the Tang. Drink the Tang. No, no, I liked your organizational. I think that was your latest one. How you organized all your writings oh. and uh, yeah, you, know, you can so. tell I'm very organized here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a system to it, right, Joe? There's a system yeah. for it. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> organized chaos. Yeah. Organized did, chaos. Organized chaos. That did inspire me. I I need to get the notebooks. And well, you know, there's an old saying. <laughs> there's an old saying. What a, 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 a neat office is a sign of a I don't know what it is. What is the old saying there? Somebody knows how to finish that. But I think a sloppy office is means you're creative, right? Well, then it, I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I am a messy genius. <laughs> well, May, uh, you, you've been typing and, and you said it was related to the typing prompt. Did you want to either read it or, or talk about okay. it? I will. Uh, I don't know if it's like... See. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so I'll read it. Today's topic is how can we be ourselves with our typewriters? My answer is to sit down at one and type whatever comes to mind, right? I often do stream of consciousness typing just to be able to type on something um, because I'm not a real writer with goals and deadlines. Typing is just a hobby of mine and so I have total freedom to type whatever I like. As an amateur who types just for fun, the manual typewriter inspires me to be myself. There are no digital distractions. They are totally human powered machines. The typewriter says whatever I want it to, whenever I like. However, I do often get writer's block because I tend to think too hard about what I'm saying and strive for too much perfection and grammar and spelling. But typewriters are helping me get over my insecurities of writing by being the stylish analog machines that they are with the sole purpose of being ex an extension of our thoughts and feelings. So that was that was my answer to your type. It was very good. Very nice. Very, very good. Nice. Thank you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I feel like, you know, when you get into typewriters, you you kind of start getting philosophical about them. You know, you can't mm, help true. it. Because you know, writing in philosophy are, you know, very intimately entwined. So oh, yeah. You yeah. can't have philosophy if you can't write. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with science. You can't have science if you don't communicate. I go. think that was that was for me one of the breakthrough points in my uh, YouTube video creating was getting beyond the mechanics of just doing videos about typewriter, like whatever reviews and whatever, but getting more into the usage mode, the philosophy of typing as a as a creative endeavor. That that was kind yeah. of a breakthrough point for me. Yeah. I think I, I've watched some of those episodes. You you kind of incorporate that into almost all of your episodes. I do, yeah. Typewriter philosophy and yes. writing, you know, just, just writing in general. Yeah. And, um, that's why I'm such a huge fan of yours. And you've inspired me not only to write, but taught me about typewriters and, and just your creative ideas. So 
Joe. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we should have all the Joe. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. You know, <laughs> you should start a Patreon account, and and if if when you join the Patreon, you'll you'll get membership to the Secret Mountain Retreat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I especially right. enjoy uh, Joe's typewriter experience videos, like. Typing in bed, typing yes. in the car. Yeah, the yes. 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 Lap typing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Lap typing. Yeah, boffice. exactly. The boffice. The boffice. That's right. Yeah. The boffice. <laughs> has inspired, has inspired many boffice. typing sessions. In, well, you know, during this last year and... of people being in lockdown, I really, I really want to get out more with typewriters and do some more mm -hmm. typing out in the field videos for sure. <clears throat> yeah. Do it. <laughs> yes. Do it. Do it. I also enjoy. I also enjoy the, the your when you go to over to Kevin's house and, and show the, yes. the yes. his machines and the, mm -hmm. and yep. the yeah yeah that's um, always fun. We haven't done that as much lately, but yeah, that that is fun. Yes. Well, I guess I'm going to sign off. All right. It's only what is it? Twelve. What is it here? Well, mountain time. Twelve thirty. Oh yeah. Joe, let me finish off with a quick story about you. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So typewriters helped me get over a pretty rough time in 2017, 2018. And now just so he knows, I've been corresponding with Joe. Uh, Joe sends me about a letter a year. I'd send him more, but I thought, well, maybe he doesn't really want to hear from me. So I, I hope. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm due for my 2021 letter here in the next six months, Joe, just so you know. Um, so I had just gotten over a lot of tough times and typewriters had really helped me out by typing things out. I helped mm -hmm. sort of realize some of my feelings and accept my humanity and my mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I had just happened to get a letter from Joe and I wrote Joe back. And of course I had mistakes in there and I had X's and all this kind of stuff. And I was feeling pretty good about life. And then uh, my next letter that I got from Joe was Joe going, well, you know, I really like to be very, very careful. And I, I take a lot of time to write everything correctly so that I don't make mistakes. And that's just something about the way I grew up and where I've come from in the world. Mm -hmm. And I immediately thought back to my last letter going, Oh my God, that thing was rife with mistakes. He's never going <laughs> to, he's going to think he's a complete and utter moron. And I went into the destruction. No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't that bad, but I was like, oh God, I've made a lot of mistakes. Maybe he thinks I'm a loser. Um, but I got, anyway, I thought that was funny because. Well, you know, I, I thanks for, I, I actually admire, see if I, I look upon my viewpoint as a, as a, as a disadvantage. I, I, I admire people who can type uh, and edit with cross the strikeouts or whatever. Um, like Vinny McFeet's his blog. Uh, if you, if you've seen on the blogosphere, um, he, he types uh, and does a wonderful thing about just editing out, striking out his words. And it's, it's still very viewable. I admire people that can do that. I, I just have this hang up about, you know, having to correct every little mistake, you know, it just yeah. gets to be, you know. Well, that's well, your it, engineering mind, Joe. You Everything yeah. has to be perfect in engineering. Yeah. So yeah. That's why. I think that's kind of interesting because um, uh, for me, I think it's kind of cool seeing um, all the cross, you know, the cross outs mm -hmm. and, and everything and just mm -hmm. see, seeing it for what it is because you can kind of get like a picture inside that person's mind and kind of see their, their, creative process in a way and so kind of being able to see that um it's just it's just it's, it's nice to see and, and it's also shows you you know we're, we're all human and we we all kind of we, we all make mistakes and um it, it's i don't know for, for me i i like i like seeing mistakes and all <laughs> yeah. not perfect what <laughs> <laughs> well, i am we literally trying to make that leap right now um the last three letters that I've sent out. Uh, I'm calling them naked letters. Um, they, <laughs> you know, including my heirs um, oh. and, and leaving them. And I've, I was estimating the other day, I think in my five months now, since um, getting my first typewriter, I've uh, typed something like 140 letters. Wow. And um, I've used correct type on every single one of them until just the last uh, few days and it's painful at times um and i want to i want to cross this this barrier that i'm facing to kind of just free myself up a little bit 
but I cringe every time I, I make a mistake and I leave it there and I like, Oh, type on type on. And so it, it's, it's funny, you know, to, to talk about, but I truly am finding it to be a bit of a challenge. And I, I would like to get to the point where, where I can um, just not worry about it anymore. You know, that's what I'm attempting now to, to reach that point mentally. It's a worthwhile journey, Bill, and I highly recommend it. It took me a few years to accept um, that and start to move forward with it and keep going. But I, when I truly release, and I mean, you don't engage your logical, you know, ch checking brain, your perfection brain, uh, yeah. you write a little bit differently and, and the tone of what you write goes a little easier and it feels a little better and it flows a little better. And you got to sort of beat the heck out of that part of your brain that goes, whoa, whoa, what did you just do there? You typed mm -hmm. the Y, that should have been an X. Jeez. Yep. You know, um, and you just keep moving forward. And, you know, it's a habit building thing, any neural pathway, uh, but we're, we're raised in this world of perfection, right? Mm -hmm. We're always to drive for the top and go for the thing. But you know what? I listened to a great story a couple of years ago called Embracing Mediocrity. I think it was a podcast mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. And uh, at first you're like, embrace mediocrity. Well, that's just, that's just a recipe for losers. Um, but <laughs> it was such a podcast uh, just about, hey, we're not perfect. We've got to accept we're, we're going to make mistakes. And if people can't yeah. accept for that, uh, too, too effing bad. Um, and it was just, it's just been a journey for me too. I mean, I got my moments, but um, I think, you know, it's good you're on that. And I see you're on that. And I think that's a good, and I really heartily encourage you to keep just letting the mistakes happen. Yeah, that's encouraging. I appreciate hear. your comments, uh, uh, Sean. I really do. Thank you. And I'll try to get a letter out to you soon. <laughs> yeah, hey, sometime by June, it's okay. I'm just... Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Once hey, a quarter. A, you're a popular, busy guy. And I understand I don't rate that highly on the list. So, you know, when I get it, I run around the house. And, Carol, June! <laughs> Which, who the hell's Joe? And I'm like... Uh, well, if we're going to start a cult, you know, we have to come up with like different <laughs> stages of development. We'll call them paragraphs, right? So if you're in the second paragraph, <laughs> it's when you're learning to live with mistakes. <laughs> if you're going to start a cult, you're going to need hats. You're yeah. going to need hats. We're going to need merch. Hats. We're we going to have merch. It can be like a 12 paragraph program and you got to work your way through the paragraphs. Yes, <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys are great. So how many of you when you're when you're typing and and you type along and you're going along with the flow and all of a sudden you type the wrong word for the sentence that you're writing mm -hmm. and you just don't want to go back and fix it so you just write a completely different sentence? Yep. <laughs> yes. I've done that a yeah. couple of times. Yeah. Sometimes it works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's surprising kind of like you hit that barrier and all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, where else can I go with this? And well, it I, becomes a creative word. challenge. Yeah. It's a creative challenge, exactly. right? Like I, yeah, I hit like the, the word wrong, puzzle. exactly. You hit the wrong letter to start out the new word and you meant to hit a T and you hit, let's say a D or something. Okay, what D word can I use? <laughs> <laughs> makes this, this, you know? <laughs> yeah. What F word can I use? What F this? word? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. To me a lot, so. <laughs> That's funny. I have a quick question for yes, you, yes. Writer. What is the these little wings inside the royal O? What are they for? Because my royal A does not have these oh. little wings. It's, it's actually a dust shield. It keeps oh, dust off the segment. That makes uh, okay, so it just protects the typewriter even more. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the, yeah, the, the royal big machines KMMs. have those too. Yeah, the yeah. little wings. They're pretty. The KMM uh, KMM yeah. has bigger ones, but yeah, that's. They're kind of loose, though. You can kind of move them forwards and backwards. Mm -hmm. So it's only really one through, and they sometimes come loose. I've often found so them. I just get... need to tighten them a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, so they're crumb little... catchers. They're crumb catchers crumb for catchers. erasing yeah, eraser and crumb sense. catcher. Or bagels. Yeah. <laughs> or bagels. <laughs> <laughs> all right hey, everybody Bill. so it's been it's been like uh we're at the three three hours and 40 minutes mark holy, holy cow <laughs> oh, <laughs> we love typewriters don't we <laughs> I, I feel like so. hotel california so. in here <laughs> look at indro indro has his oh, indro. Uh, nice. oh, look at that hermes 2000 nice. Ooh, yeah. let's see let's see all back together What's the knob on the back of that, Indro? Tension control. Tension control. Ah, yes. Tension. I'm missing this uh, knob. 
Uh, uh, that's not that's not a problem on this side. It's all right, uh, but yeah. it's like brand new. It's uh, very clean. Very cool. cool. Took me about five hours. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Time well spent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was very, very dirty. I, I took it almost completely apart, except wow. for the mechanics inside. But I, most of it is, uh, came out. So, yeah, it looks good. And it types well. <laughs> so, uh, new ribbon, fresh ribbon, and uh, just some testing, quick testing. Uh, well, that's nice. Looks good. Uh, wow. pun it punched a hole. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hello. That is not too bad. Uh, I was pressing too hard. <laughs> well, it, it was good to see everybody. And Bernardo, it was great to see yeah. you again, too. Yes. Thanks for yes. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Gregory. Yeah. I'll, try to be, I'll try to be on again next week. Yes, definitely. Definitely. That and I'll be responding good. to Bill. And yes. Maybe, you'll, maybe, Joe, you'll get a, a thermal postcard Ooh. from me soon. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, hey, Gregory. Thank you, Gregory. Pleasure as always. Be sure and check uh, tightpowels.com to get the uh, next week's uh, typing prompt. So, all right. Well, thank you so much. Hey, hey Gregory. Look forward to next time. Bye. 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 Thank you, Gregory. Thank Thanks, you, everyone else.